Hello everyone, this is Rex Red. I am back with another easy 3D TV tutorial. And today we're gonna talk about normal maps and bump maps and how to make normal maps and bump maps from any image so that you can use them in DAS Studio, okay? And what are bump maps? What are normal maps? What do they do? Well, um, they create an illusion, okay? And if you, if you look at this particular picture of the angel here, you will see in just one moment, I have to, uh, do a few things here. Welcome, people. Welcome, welcome. And, oh my gosh, if I can get the right darn... I just have to make sure that all of my privacy windows are closed here on my computer. I, I try to do everything. I have, like, a ton of things going on through my head. Today was tax day. Well, you can imagine. It's just a ton of things to do and to get ready and uh and so and then i also wanted to we're gonna close all of that down all right back to the workstation here we turn the workstation back on okay this see this walkway here in this image notice how there are little teeny bumps and then there are like little crevices in it little things and a lot of those things that you see here are not actually like bumps. They're ju they just look like bumps. They, it may, they're like a trick with the light. And I believe the normal map is the one that gives you like kind of fake bumps. They look like bumps. It makes it look like there's little shadows and things like that. But they're not, but there's not actually anything 3D going on, but then the bump map is different where it actually creates like a, a bumps, like literally physical like crevices and things in the surface of the geometry. I'm not sure how all that works and correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody, I'm back again and look, Angus. My hands are in the scene. Imagine that. Like I'm kind of, yes, we're doing well here. Yep. See, I actually have hands in the scene. It's nice, huh? They're actually like they can dance around a little bit and everything. So, and they don't get cut off unless I go over here. And then I don't have arms anymore. But I think that's far enough. I don't usually go out like that very often. So, all right. So... Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk, I don't know, uh, I have, uh, I have eight fingers, yes, and thumbs. That's amazing. Very astute of you to uh, point that out. Thank you. Uh, now, I'm going to make sure that I am on the live chat so I don't miss certain people chatting. I'm not sure why it's not showing you up as a concurrent viewer, but it shows you down here in this little graph that I have, but it says convert current viewers and it's not showing you up, but eventually it might. Okay, so, oh, I just wish that when I came on here, everybody would just come in at once and so that they would, um, but you know, people have lives, they have things they have to do, you know, and but, you know, then later on down as the video goes on, they miss stuff. And I don't know, maybe they go back and watch it from the beginning. That would be very nice. I, have I watered the flowers? They look much brighter than last time. Well, there's been, there's been some rain. And as you can see, the sky is a little bit cloudy and everything. And he's, uh, he had to hide under in the little gazebo thing when the rain came because he's it's very hard to fly when your feathers are all wet. 
So, yeah, and his clothes, they were drenching right off him. So, yes. So what we're going to do is first we're going to talk about photographs, okay? And here is, uh, I guess everything in here is kosher. Uh, oh, I think my bunny's kind of half half uh, half dressed. But, um, yeah, that's Albert. Um, so uh, we have Albert here, and, uh, yeah, his nose got smush, smushed when he was at the uh, Goodwill, and I've not been able to get the smush as eyes a little bit smushed, too. But, yes, Albert's looking pretty good today, so, yeah. So, all right, I was busy taking pictures today, and, um... What I'd like to do is talk about cameras first, okay? Phone cameras, okay? Because this is where you're going to get your images. And I'll show you a few images. Now, when you, when you see me put my mouse over top of these images, okay, um, you will notice that the Windows Explorer tells me how big the images are. And these are 4,000. This one's 4,000. This is 4K, okay? Close to 4K image, right? Well, 4K is terrible, okay? 4K is terrible for using in Daz Studio for the things that I want to show you how to do. Now it says you're here, Angus. So it says we have one concurrent viewer. Uh, so uh, it's nice. You're showing up, okay? So now, as you can see, this is 4K dimensions. It says 4K by 2,252. And this one says 4K. This one says 4K. But as I go along, all of a sudden, this one's 2K because I turned the camera this way, and it's still by 4,000, 4, okay? But then we get to uh, some of these here. That's 4K, okay? 4 Four, what's how big is this? Show me how big you are. Okay, that's four. This one's taking its time to tell us. That's four, four. Okay, so I, I, I believe this one's four as well. But when we get over here to this one here, suddenly we have... Now think, <laughs> four, there's a long way from four to 12, okay? So this is a picture of the road, I believe, that I took. This is a picture of tar. And look how, this is 4K, all right? And I'm gonna tell you that 4K is really not enough for what we wanna do, okay? It's nice and everything, but um, if you really wanna kinda do something really cool, you need to have something a little bit than, bigger than 4K. And I believe that 4K, a 4K image, no, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Daz, uh, Daz compresses images when it goes to render. It does, and I, usually a 4K image will get compressed because of the default settings and all. So you can use a lot, quite a few 4K images in your in your uh in your scene and it will and they'll get compressed but they'll still come out looking pretty much like they did now this image on the other hand i took this today is is a 12k image okay this is a 12k image so when i zoom in on the grass look at this look how closely we can go before the grass, kind of this. It still looks like good about there. And we have all this, <laughs> this area to zoom out. This is a 12K image, okay? This image was taken on my Samsung phone, okay? This is a Samsung, uh, I keep th I'm thinking S not, S22. I, I have so many cryptic numbers that I have to remember in my head. This is a Samsung S22, 
And what's really, 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 really cool about this Samsung S22 is when I turn it on and I verify that I am who I am and I open up the camera, you'll see that, and I don't think you can see this, but um, what it says there is, and my, my phone, my camera's just not, is, have you almost said it, it, when it pops up, it says 12M, okay, for the camera. And that's 12 million, 12 megabit, megapixels. All right, so that means that this is at 12 megapixels. That's uh, about, that's about 4K, I believe. That's the 4,000, 12, 12 meg. But when you switch that, this camera, this phone here, does 108 megapixels, 108 megapixels. And that will give you an image like this, okay? And I think I have a few other of them that are, uh, this one I believe is also, no, one of these, some of these tree stump ones are, 22, where's the other one? Where's the other one? Here it is, maybe. 4,000, no, this one maybe. Four, four. There it is, here's one right here. Now look as we zoom in on this. Look, this is what, you know, having a, a, a new phone will get you. It will get you images like this, where you can zoom right in on the, uh, and say, oh, there's a little, there's a little lichen family living right in there. You can see them. They're all sit they're sitting watching TV, a little lichen family. And you can see the lichen growing on the outside of this, all the little mold kind of like things. This image I held handheld. And so it might be a slightly a bit blurry. I have another one that I did here. This is another 12. And this one looks like I held it a little bit better. Okay, and my phone has image stabilization in it also. So this uh, is really, really, so as you, as you can see, and this is a very long image. So it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pixels, okay? There's probably close to, a I don't know, a billion <laughs> pixels on this, okay, uh, on this image. So what does this all mean? Well, what this means is that your world around you is a texture paradise that you can go in and now I'm going to open some of these 4K ones and just to show you these that I, I kind of messed up on these. Now this one might be 12K. Let me make sure before I start showing. Now see, this is a 4K image. Okay. But even at 4K, look at what we have here. We have a texture with a leaf in it, which I could get rid of easily. But um, this is a, uh, and there's another leaf here. If we just want the wispy stuff, we'd have to get rid of the two leaves and all, but it's very easy to do. Okay, so this is a texture. Okay, that you can put on anything in Daz. You could put it on a, on a sweater that somebody's wearing. Okay, so that it looks like they have, uh, have this kind of hairy, this kind of maybe wool or some kind of fabric kind of texture to their, you know, just an idea. Here's a texture right here. Okay. And you can just, you could put this on somebody's shirt, you know, or something. It's uh, because this, that's the way 3D works. And so your phone is a texture paradise. Look at this. This is a side of a building. Look at that. And unfortunately, when I snapped this picture, I had, I kept thinking that if it says 12K, then the 100, then the 108 
megapixel is is activated i was wrong it was like when it says 108 megapixel then you're then you're shooting in 108 megapixels i don't know why i was thinking that but even at 108 megapixels even at 2000 at at 4k this is pretty nice you could put this right behind a scene like that and there are two people standing in front of of this and but the problem when you bring this into Daz Studio is it's a just a flat image, okay? And that's not the way 3D works, okay? 3D has what's called layers, uh, 3D materials and shaders and all of that in Daz Studio. They have layers, and so what they and they have layer upon layer upon, and each layer is another 4K image. Okay, so the idea is how it is that, but this image that I took with my camera has only one layer. So how do we make the other layers? And I'm I'm talking over top of my keyboard. All right, how do we make the other layers? That is the question, okay? And I would say most DAZ artists are familiar with normal maps, which gives you a kind that, give, that makes this image have bumps. It, it follows the contours and fills, makes this part deep and makes so it, it literally puts a depth gives depth physical depth to the surface of this texture okay and the same thing with the normal map i believe the normal map makes it look like it has it gives it an appearance of depth which is very realistic and the bump map actually does like sink in the areas and give it depth okay so that is so but how do we make those other maps for this image so that we can use our phone and just go out and grab textures, bring them home, make the bump map, make the normal map, bring the bring this texture, put it on like a plane in Daz Studio, and then make the uh, uh, put also put those layers on put the layer the the bump layer and the normal layer on so that we have uh, something that looks very 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 3d okay this, this looks 3d you know as it is but that's not what daz is about because when you shine a light on this it should create little teeny uh shadows around the edges of things okay that's what 3d this won't this will just shine on it and make it brighter that's it that's all it will do uh-huh yeah so we have to we have to create this normal map and create the bump map for this the uh, the normal map is a purplish colored map Okay, why it's purple like that, I don't know. I don't know everything about this. I only know certain things enough to get me by right now, and I'm not proud of that fact. And that's why I'm here, because as I talk about this, other people can say, oh, a normal map does. Welcome to the, welcome whoever you are. We have another person here, and they just left. Oh, it seems like they left. They were here for a moment. All right, so we hopefully we'll get some people. It's eight o'clock tonight, so it's still kind of early. So unfortunately, the program that I'm going to use to make the normal maps and to make the bump maps is, ta-da, Photoshop, okay? Yes, and Photoshop is expensive to use, okay? It's, it's expensive. It's um, it all depends on the deal you make with with photos with Adobe. If you have trouble paying for it, you get in touch with them, chat with them, and say, you know, I I just it's too expensive. I can't afford it. I don't really make any money from my business. I do this as a hobby, 
and see what they say, okay? They might give you a break and, and on the price, okay? Don't just assume that you have to pay full price for it, okay? So what you do is when you go to, when you go to take out, they say, I'd like to just try it, you know, and they'll give you like a year at a discounted price. So uh, then you're, you're in business. Then, and what you, you don't just get Adobe Photoshop, you get all the Adobe stuff. Every single Adobe app, which I only use two, sometimes three, some, well, I use about four of them. I, sometimes I use Illustrator and sometimes I use, I use Premiere a lot and I love Premiere. I use Premiere tons and tons. I use a Photoshop many times a day and I use, and I use After Effects eh, every once in a great while. Okay, so I know my way around those uh, Premiere and Adobe Photoshop, I'm pretty adept at. And uh, Illustrator, I'm also pretty good at. Uh, After Effects, I can get around in it. So, all right. So what you have to do is you have to, in order to use Adobe Photoshop to create a normal map, and a bump map from this, from any image, okay, is you have to have the version of Adobe Photoshop that has 3D capabilities. And I don't know the year exactly, but at one point, Adobe switched over to using the graphics card to do your to display and do all the kinds of stuff with your rather than the the processor rather than the the cpu to compute your images and when they did then they had to like rewrite all of their 3d stuff and they just decided to deprecate it instead and just take it out of Photoshop and and maybe until a later date maybe they're working on it and make to make uh, bring the 3d stuff back in okay so what that means is that the latest version of Photoshop won't make a normal or a bump map and that really um, that's really terrible. Okay. It's, it's just, in my opinion, you know, I'm not, this isn't a reflection on Adobe. I understand why they did. It's just terrible for us as artists because we're unable to use the latest version of Do Adobe Photoshop to make a bump map and to make welcome people. We have four people. Thank you for the like, Angus. You are very kind. So this is about how to make easily make a bump map. It's not that hard to make bump maps and it's not that hard to make normal maps in Photoshop, okay? And the thing is, is I will show you, if you don't use Photoshop, maybe, I don't know, there's DaVinci or there, there's other, there are other Photoshop knockoff programs, and this might help you to understand how to do it in those programs, okay? So it's it's worth watching how this is done in Photoshop so that you can say, oh, okay, I understand how to make a normal map. Now, there are some free programs that make normal maps, but they are so complicated. They're complicated to install, they're complicated to open, and they're complicated to to get the normal map out of them, it's it, it's like almost it's you know, and I I made normal maps in Photoshop in just like moments, okay? Like it just within you know, I would say probably about two or three clicks, and uh, and to save the file, and I had my normal map. And same thing, two or three clips clicks, save the file, and I had my bump map in Photoshop. And so it's so easy to just take any image, load it into Photoshop, make your normal map, make your bump map, and then load them into DAS. So that's the way things are supposed to be. And that's the way Adobe works. 
Okay, so because the latest version of Adobe doesn't make bump and normal maps because they deprecated all their 3D stuff, because those maps are not just like planes, they are they are actually 3D things, okay? So what you have to do then is you have to open up Adobe Creative Cloud, okay? And uh, this is in the Apps section, okay? And when you come here, if you have Adobe, okay, I would suggest looking through, first of all, looking through all of the programs that you have on on your installed on your computer, okay? And um, I'm, I'm not going to say you have to do this. I'm suggesting that you might do this because you might be the same as me as a, you have like all these beta programs and you have uh, maybe two or three versions of Photoshop from all kinds of years back. And, and so what you do is you put your mouse over top of this at, over this and wait until it pops up let's see over here version okay we see where I when I put my mouse over this it says version 2.56 art welcome welcome you have missed some of the part I'll try to catch you up on this on what we're doing but we are making we I'm showing I'm going to show you how to make your own to take any image you take with your phone and make a bump map and a normal map quite easily from it. And we're gonna do it with Photoshop, but you can do it, you might be able to do it with uh, whatever your photo editing. Uh, there's something called GIMP, I think, or something that everybody's using, I'm not sure. Uh, but okay, so what you do is you put your mouse over top. And as you see, when I put my mouse over top of each one of these programs, it says I have the latest version. My driveway as the sun sets in my wild east town. Oh, well, that's very nice. I'm glad you got it. Par got your car parked, and now maybe you can sit back and relax with us. We have six people. Thank you for the likes, people. And now it went down to four. So, but yes, okay, this is going to be awesome. Now, don't be, uh, just because you don't use Photoshop doesn't mean that this isn't going to be, um, Yes, I'm going to show you, CDJ, how to make bump and normal maps in an easy way. If you use Photoshop, um, if you don't, then at least you're going to know kind of how it's done in maybe some of these other programs do it. I, I will tell you that the latest version of Photoshop does not do it. You have to go. So what you have to do is you go to the latest version, you go into the Creative Cloud desktop, and you go over the top of Photoshop. And that's why I said, is you go through here, and if you got like all these beta programs and everything, just make sure that, just go through and make sure the one that says latest, then the one, then you have, and you have a bunch of them that aren't the latest, right click on them, like where I right click here, or click here on these three dots, and uninstall them, okay, so that you only have the latest versions. And the only thing I would say that to be careful about is if you don't normally use the latest version, but you use like last year's version of Photoshop or something, maybe you have a bunch of brushes installed in there and you've got to move, you've got to copy those brushes into your latest version of Photoshop before you uninstall the old version. But it's really, your system will thank you for getting rid of all of that clutter on your computer, all of those old versions, and all of the beta versions. I hate to say it, but those beta versions, every time I open Photoshop, it opens up a beta instead of the, the regular version, and, and, it's, and it's asking me to update it. It's uh, updates are ready, and it's just, I say, oh no, and I'm in the middle of work. So uh, get take the betas off if you're so inclined. Uninstall and make sure it just everything that's listed here is when you put your mouse over, it says the latest version, okay? Then come over here and see where it says, when you click on these three dots, 
and I'm going to turn on my my little handy dandy little tool here so that it lights up my my mouse okay when I click on these little dots three little dots here it says other versions okay so you click on this you open this up and this window pops up and go all the way down to the bottom and install Photoshop 22.2. That's the version that still has the 3D part of it that wasn't deprecated, okay? Because in the latest versions of Photoshop, they took all that 3D stuff out. So you can't make normal maps and you can't make bump maps. So that's why I said, yeah, install another version of Photoshop on your computer. So what you might as well do then is just get rid of all of the extra versions of everything and make sure you have only the latest version of everything and then install this one back version of Photoshop, okay, on your computer. And this, uh, so then we have version 22.2. Okay, and this is the one with the 3D stuff in it. But it's not ready yet to, it's not ready yet to use the 3D parts, okay? And I think if I click on this, open, continue, open, okay. And remember them? Okay, so uh, these were, uh, so this is a splash screen for uh, the 2020 version of Photoshop. It's a little bit different, but we're, I'm gonna click open here. And what we're gonna do is go to my desktop and click on this here. And we are going to click on, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a uh we're gonna open up now this one is four thousand so what you guys missed before when i started this video out is that i've been out taking pictures i don't know if anybody else has a samsung s22 but what you have to do is you you just take you have to set your camera to take the biggest me megapixel pictures it can whatever whatever megapixel your your phone or phone or camera or whatever takes you have to take the you have to set it to the largest me megapixels and my phone this phone here happens to take 108 megapixel pictures which means this little phone camera takes 12k images yeah, so I just snap a picture. So you go around where you live, okay? And you take a picture of your lawn. You take a picture of the sidewalk. You take a picture of rocks. And you take a picture of the sand on the beach and the, the, the wild grass that grows. And this right here is, what is that? Um, those, it's another uh, thing that I uh, took a picture of, some kind of part of the ground. This is, uh, oh, these, this is a r the rug in, my, in the hall of my building, okay? Uh, so you just take pictures. This one is 12K picture. And so, but what, you, what you're looking for is textures and things that you would want to maybe, like see these rocks? And unfortunately, these rocks only came, I had my camera set to 4K. And so they are not, um, they're not going to really work for what I want to do. And this, it's every time my camera turns off and it turns back on, it goes back to, to 4K. And which is then I'm ready to take a picture and it's like, oh, I just, I got to switch it back to 8K, um, to 12K. So, and that's a pain. And I don't think it used to do that, but uh, it's decided to do that. And so, uh, now, uh, what I have here is a 12K picture of a sidewalk, okay? So, what we're going to do is open that. 
Now this is a 12K image. And, and as you can see when we open Photoshop, this is Photoshop 2020 or something. So again, okay, we got to reorient. You got to set things back up. We're going to go to with Navigator. Make sure our Navigator's here. When we zoom out of the, in on this, look how far we can zoom in on this image. This is really, really large. Okay, so it's crooked. So what I'm going to do is we're going to show transforms. We're going to bring our select it. Why is okay? I got to unlock it, I guess. And we're just going to turn it until it looks kind of straight. And I don't know that that I'm even going to be able to do this because. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is crop it. All right, we're going to bring the crop in here. And here. Now, this is a very large image, just just so, it, you know, just to let you know that is it is a very large. It's not perfectly. OK, so we're going to go image crop. All right. And see, it's it's not right because of the way I but we're going to use it. OK, so now when you go into 3D. OK, what's going to happen I'll, uh, is when you go to filter. Now, in the latest version of Adobe, you won't see this 3D in filter. It's gone. OK, that's why you have to load this, the earlier version of Adobe and install it on your computer. So you have them both. They both kind of work the same. So it's not like if you ha end up in one, you can do pretty much everything that you can do in the other. So, uh, but uh, this won't be here. And notice when I go over this, look at this. Generate bump map. Generate normal map. Okay. This is massive. Okay. Because this, because Adobe does it so easily. Okay. And so, but the problem is, is when you first go into this, older version, you click filter and you click on this and you go to generate, you click on it, it says, uh oh, there's a problem. Okay, and we won't let you use it. And so what you have to do is you have to go into edit, you have to go to preferences, you have to go to technology previews, okay. And then you have to Oh, gosh, I don't think that's it. It's not technology previews. It's performance. You have to go into performance. Okay. And you have to, okay. And you have to make sure this use graphics processor is selected. Okay. See that? That has to be selected. I think it's already selected by default, but I'm not positive about that. So you have to select that and make sure it's selected. And then you have to go down to this technology previews. And uh, I think it's here. Hmm. No, it's not here. It's uh Okay, I'm going to try edit I'm sh Oh, I'm sure it's technology previews. I'm just not seeing it here.
Okay, well, there's an option in here that you have to turn off. Um, let me open this up. Go to my history. Um, history. I think it's here. Open in a new tab. It might be one of these. Three. Okay. So that means you can run 23 and 22 simultaneously. So when that time happens, install the 22. Okay, it's back so here. So use Photoshop to work with the previews. You have the ability to... De All right. So this is what... And this is in technology previews. That's where I was. Okay, and there it says deactive, deactivate native canvas. You have to, this won't work if you don't deactivate the native canvas. And it's like once you do it, then it, it's all set up to work like this. But now it's, you see technology, now it's gone. You, it doesn't say activate native canvas. It's just gone. I don't know why. Maybe if you enable one of these things, enable content to wear tracing or something, it'll come back. But you... What you do is you deactivate it. I think that's what he says. Deactivate native canvas. Now, if you're going to be working a lot of 3D, this is a great option. We go up under the create. Okay, you have to click on that, and because it's, uh, it's so. Uh, and then under preferences, we're going to go down to technology previews. Under technology. Yes. Yeah, see, when it comes up, it says deactivate native canvas. You have to click on that. All right, so that's so you have to make sure that your 3D is enabled, your, that your graphics. So we'll, I'll go over that one more time so it's uh, a little clear, okay? And that, and so because when you go in to make the bump map and you go in to make the normal map, they won't work, okay? It won't work. So what you have to do then is go back to Photoshop and so you uh, it's gone here but you have that's where it is is in in the preferences technology previews you uh, you have to enable that de that to de deactivate uh, whatever that was canvas native canvas you have to check that okay and then you have to in performance you have to make sure the use graphics processor is checked then you restart this version of Photoshop and you're all set. Okay. So we cancel this. And so then when I go here into filter and 3d generate bump height map, look what happens. It actually works. Yes. Software tools. This is what we're we're doing i'm gonna i'm showing you how welcome by the way welcome welcome how to make your own bump maps and now okay this is what i don't understand about this okay obvious so is i don't know if you're supposed to invert this or not but this that doesn't look right to me so so what I'm going to do is not invert it, okay? But the um, you don't have to touch anything here. I drag the detail scale all the way up to 120, though, and I think it now it remembers that that's where I want it to be. But um, it was down about here, maybe. But I I um, I drag it up so that it's all the way up, and I suppose I could turn it down if I wanted to uh, in DAS to some degree. Maybe that's too much, but you just click OK. All right, that was that was easy. There, right there, is your bump map. OK, so I go File, Save As, Save As, Save on your computer. And we're going to save this as uh, a PNG file, I guess. And we're going to just put this word bump on it, bump. And this is going to be saved into in the same folder as the brick, brick floor. Okay, save. 
Okay, and we'll save it as the large file. It's like, why not? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is Z. Okay, what I, I undo that. And now what I'm going to do is save this because remember I cropped it. Oh, it's already, it's took, takes a while to save a 12K image, okay? So it's done now. So I can go file, save as, and we're going to save this also as a PNG. All right. And, but we're going to call this crop because I cropped it. I don't want to end up with it, you know, because I inadvertently did crop it. So I don't want to end up using the original with these bump maps or they won't line up. Okay, so we're going to save that. And now, we're, did you see how easy it was to just make that normal map? Yeah, and then we go here to, uh, back to our filter, 3D, and create the normal map. Click on this, and it, it works. Watch, it'll open right up. And you're going to recognize this when you see the normal map. It's going to say, oh, yeah, that's a normal map, all right. Okay, this is the wrong thing, because I the normal map, no, I think it's thinking, okay? Normal map is supposed to be, there we go. It's supposed to, now you see this normal map? looks backwards to me. Let's see, invert. Yeah, see, that one looked backwards. Okay. All right, so, and you just click OK. And there it is. This is your own texture, your own, maybe your own driveway or your own or if you you know live on a beach, your own beach, your your own thing, you can put this in Daz or just any kind of texture. If you want to make like uh, take a take a, a photograph of of a terry cloth and from a towel and um, some fancy towel, put it on your character's clothing, and it's like yeah, you got the image, but now you need the the bump map and the normal map. Well, here they are. Okay. And so now we go file, save as, and I don't want need you to show me this again. Just save this on my computer. And then we're going to go here to PNG again. There's our uh, bump. There's our, uh, the cropped image. And we're going to be adding that a uh, normal to it. All right, a normal map. I don't know if I did this right. It looks right to me how the, the, the bumps go down in. So, and these, these are 12K, okay? So these bricks, unfortunately, these bricks are gonna be really large because I couldn't, I wasn't like a drone. I couldn't fly over this big brick, you know, area and take a, a large image from like above. And uh, so, but so I could only like stand and hover with my phone and hopefully not get my feet in the picture. So, uh, but you could use a selfie stick and maybe get a bit higher. Uh, so, all right, that's it. Now what we're gonna do is minimize this and we're gonna go now back to, and by the way, this is, it's called uh, Adobe's retiring Photoshop features, how to keep them working. This is if you if you need any help with this. And I don't know why I didn't give him a like because he certainly uh, I like just about everything I view on Photoshop. OK, so we're going to go and minimize this. We're going to go back here. This is another image that I took today. This one's only in 4K. All right. But look how nice that is. That's the side of a building. So you go around your world, you just take your phone and snap pictures of textures, okay? And that's what you, you start texture hunting. You hunt for anything that looks like a cool texture and you have the image. Then you, you have Photoshop to just make the normal, make the bump just like that. It, di it did it in just seconds. 
only a couple of clicks. And so just look at some of the ideas <clears throat> that I used for textures here. Look at this one. These are wood chips, okay? Um, and this is only 4K as well. So, uh, and, and the thing is, is there is, in Photoshop, there's also a way to make this image here. Look how far I can zoom in on these, though. And this, again, I double check just to make sure that this, yeah, oh, this is actually 12K. So we could have used this here. This is 12K. That's why we can zoom way, way, way in and look at the texture of this, okay? And look how big it is. So, yeah. Uh, so, what you like again, what you do is you set your camera to uh, the highest megapixels it will take, okay? And then look at this. This is another really cool one here. That one I think came out blurry, but the next one didn't. Look at that. Image stabilization kicked in. This is only 4K. All right, but you could put this right on a plane, and not only does the plane then have, uh, have bumps, but it has the normal map as well. So it, and I think the way these work, the bumps are like big things, like of the whole rock where the normal map is the is or or um is the little bumps on the thing the little little teeny crevices in the textures okay i'm not positive about that but uh bumps are actually 3d where normal maps are are appear like it it gives gives like dark spots that re react with the light okay so it does a trick with the lighting, okay, with the, to make the normal map, where bumps are actually, when you bring up that bump slider, you're actually making the surface 3D, okay? Uh, I, if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments, but uh, I believe that. And so this, and this is only 4K, so when I get in, it's not so pretty. So you want to set it to the highest image that you can take okay and just i'll give you a few more examples of some stuff here's uh here's some kind of great this one came out also in 4k so imagine what that it would have been like if it had been 12k i got to go back and retake shoot this picture in 12k because this would be a really cool background for you know a scene it's just really really nice and I also took the picture, uh, uh, I took, I think, some sideways ones. No, look at this. This is, uh, this is again, and this one was also in 4K. So if I had just taken, this is a sidewalk. If I had just taken this picture in, let me put my mouse over and make sure. Yeah, these all, my phone, when I turn it off, it switches back to 4K. And yeah, and I just really bothers me uh, that I have to that I have to <laughs> switch it back and forth. Yeah, and uh, this is pretty cool here. Just some kind of interesting stuff that you might want to have in 3D rather than just a flat image. This is another one here. Just, uh, I probably want to straighten it out. And it's much better if you use a tripod when you snap the picture. And then these are just like background things that I could put this on a plane and set this behind people. And I just find that these things are, uh, are interesting. This could go in a background as well. Um, or maybe even just this part here, cut this off and have this, this part in the background behind somebody. Yeah, you could use AI to take this out and to take that out. And it would be kind of interesting to have something like that in the background. So, uh, yeah. Um, and, and we have the normal map. We have the bump map. 
we can put it right on it and all of it and it's going to look like all that other stuff that you see in Daz. All of these images, that's all they are is images, but they they are actually on 3D, you know, uh models. They're laid across models that actually have the the geometry in there. So we're going to kind of work with that a little bit here in in Photoshop. So I mean, in Daz. So we are ready now to to open Daz and let's bring our bricks in and see what they look like with a bump map and a normal map on them. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you something else. Now, we can't just put a plane in, okay? See where this divisions and saw the divisions if you want to be able to mess with, to give uh, the, the plane, and let's go back here to this image here, and let's take a look at these rocks, okay? The, the rocks on the beach. See, what you would want to do here with these rocks, if I can find them, where are you, rocks? Uh, here they are. Here are the rocks. Um, we open these rocks. Unfortunately, I took the picture of these rocks with uh, at 4K. I would be using this, uh, but I wanted to use an image that was 12K just to kind of bring in the best size. But what you might want to do is is to just use mesh grabber and pull on these rocks a little bit, like just pull them out of the scene, pull, give them a little bit of, uh, of, so it's not just a flat thing, all right, to give it a little bit. And you can't pull on it too much because these you have these pieces of grass here and you pull on this and you're gonna end up distorting the grass. So, uh, but you could pull this rock out a little bit, pull these rocks up out and things like that, pull that one out. All right, but you're not going to be able to do that in Daz if you don't set your divisions up because 10 divisions mean this going to be, the plane is going to be made of big, gigantic, like, uh, polygons. And so you'd probably want to go down to, like, 20 or maybe uh, 30. 30, let's see how many this is. Uh, we accept... Okay, and the way to find out how many it is, is to look at the wireframe and see, the, look how big those are. That's still not very big, okay? To be able to kind of shape the, the surface a little bit. So uh, we're, these are bricks, so it's just gonna be a flat thing anyway. But just to kind of demonstrate a little bit about putting it on a surface that you can deform, to kind of fit whatever it is that you're, like if it's a bunch of rocks, you, you're you gonna, especially you wanna take a picture of them without the grass in it, so then you can deform them and, and give them some shape to give it a, a little, so that somebody's actually sitting on one of the rocks and their legs go down in front of the rock. Well, they, you can't do that if it's a plane, okay? So, so what you would go is maybe go 50 and we go 50. And there's a few more. We go to the plane and go to delete that. And let's say go uh, to the plane. And just more divisions means, okay, 150 means that you can take this plane now and really use Mesh Grabber and grab it and do all kinds of stuff with it, okay? It's got, it's got geometry in it. Now, just to, to again go back, now, I'll show you an example of this. We'll go into Mesh Grabber real quick. It doesn't take long to do that. And now when I click on this and I deform this, look how smooth it deforms. Okay, it gives you some kind of uh, uh, ability to deform it. And, you know, it would work at it a little bit more than the way we are here, but uh, we it gives us the ability to deform it in... Now, if I were to, and now we go into, and that's what we have now. We have, you know, so you could deform it and give it, make it looks like rocks. But the, uh, the thing is, is that 
Now we delete this plane. When I go and put in a something that would be like 10, okay? Then when we go to deform this, let's go into uh, here. You see it it doesn't really deform right. It it uh it because you have these big squares here, things are going to look square. I don't know why this they, maybe it has some kind of uh smoothing on it. Uh plane, let's go to parameters. Cuz it's not okay when we like turn this, okay? Uh we click on All right, go back into uh tool settings. We're on rotate. We're going to go back to mesh grabber. And when we rotate this like this, yeah, see the sharp edges we end up with? See them? And yeah, you're, uh, you can smooth it out later, but it, it just doesn't give you the ability to kind of uh, to really carve it out. And when you put smoothing on, all it does is smooth those edges a little. It doesn't smooth like sharp turns and bends and twists that you might want to put into a rock or something to give it more. Uh, like with those rocks, you may want to bend the edges of the, of the plane down and then put water going around the rocks and put a, put a water plane in, that kind of thing. So... Uh, we could pull this out a little bit and you could have water going around this and there'd be rocks here and have somebody sitting on them. That's what I did for this. See, but as you can see, it's not very smooth. And when you put the smoothing modifier on it, like this, and you... Where is it? Mesh resolution. Okay, it's base. If we go to... Oh, and it does not even letting us go up there. Okay, so we go edit, object, geometry, convert to sub D. It smoothened it, but it, and you can even bring it to more sub D, but as you can see, it's still only grabbing big squares. You see, there aren't, it's not really, uh, the. It, it's just smoothing it. It's not changing the inherent geometry in, within so when you rotate this, it's not going to rotate a little teeny tiny square. It's going to rotate that big square. Okay. And so, but when we go back into this, we, we set this to 150. Okay, we have our plane here. Then we go back to our, uh, and then we select this. We, we just selected a tiny little piece. Now, if I make this small, really small, like say down to three, see, I can bring up just a tiny, I can start to shape this in whatever way I want to. And the reason why I say this is because, and you can still put smoothing on, but you would definitely not be able to grab a little piece like this if you had if it was a big square <laughs> okay it's going to grab each square by square and then what you can do is you can bring this up like that and then you can still go in here into prefer uh, into object geometry convert to sub d and smoothen things out as well and you select these uh this geometry you can go in and even add more to the the surfaces uh parameters and we can go to add even more sub D level to smoothen it out sub D level two and look at that. See, so, and the reason, and the thing is, is that the reason why I tell you all of this is that Angus, it's now Angus is always the first one in, but you guys are awesome. It doesn't take you long. You're around you. I don't know. You get, I don't know if you get messages on your phone, but thank you very much for being part of this channel. I love, love that so much that you're there. You're here and, and all see, I, I have to turn, I am a met notification list. I live a notification list life. I'm not allowed notifications. And the reason why I'm not is because I record music. And I can't have my phone while I'm singing vocals. And, you know, it's just like going... 
you know, because it gets into my recordings. And so it just doesn't work. And then I'm in the middle of my work and I can't have like these, like I'm broadcasting here and I can't have a notification saying um, <laughs> your aunt just logged in, you know, or, uh, you know, I just can't, um, I, I, I'm not allowed to have notifications, unfortunately. And so, all right. So the thing is, is that this plane, and I don't know why you can't do this after the effect, but you can't, there's no way to increase the actual geometry in the plane once you put it into your scene. Okay. So if I want to pull these bricks up and kind of mess with the bricks and kind of give them little, uh, little actual dent dentations or, or, or give the sidewalk. Okay. I give the sidewalk, go back to, to, uh, okay. Z, Z, let's get these out of here. I think, I don't think I can undo sub D. I have to actually remove it. No, you can't undo sub D. Once you put it in, you have to remove it by going into uh, the select the plane, go edit object geometry. And it would say here, uh, removes, uh, remove. I think it's remove smoothing modifier. Let's try that. No, see, that didn't do it either. So I'm not sure. I think the only way to really remove it once you add it is to just turn it down to zero. Turn them both down to zero. Uh, I'm not sure about that. So there must be a way to remove sub D, but you can definitely remove it by just setting it back to zero. Object, geometry, surfaces, data, okay. Convert to sub D, D, tri D triangulate. Okay, now uh, these, you would think that these would be a way to like add more geometry. There's no way it says add level of detail. Let's go here to, um, this might be new because I asked about this. Let's go back to uh, wireframe. Okay. It says add level. I've never seen that before. Object, object. Where, where? Okay, we have to select the plane. Edit object geometry. It says add level of detail. No, okay. See, that's something else. All right. There's no way to add more squares to this after it's in the scene. So if you've already put your textures on it and you've already deformed it and everything, and you say, oh gosh, it's, I wish I'd made it 175 so these little squares were a little bit smaller. You have to start all over, okay? So uh, that's how that works, okay? So that's why you have to think ahead. So I'm gonna put a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna put some geometry here so that this, this, uh, brick thing that we're going to add that it's going to uh that i can deform it and give it some wavy you know take this this mesh grabber tool and kind of go here and just bring it down and up a little bit in here to just kind of however i want to do it and there's a fall off here where you can do, go gain fall off not the fall off here but uh, smooth, uh, linear. So when you grab this, it doesn't do it in that kind of really funky way. It does it in a linear fall off. It's so, so we can give the, the, this road a little bit of contour, you know, a brick sidewalk isn't always, you know, it's, they get bumpy after a while, after a year or so. And the same here, you know, you just want to be able to give this all like a little bit of something to just make it so it doesn't look all even and, and, and all. And th this is where, you know, you have to think ahead and say, how much geometry do I really want in this? How much of this is going to be, uh, how much control do I want over, over this geometry to make it seem more natural, okay? 
All right. And so we go back to here and let's now go to surfaces. Let's go to plane. We're going to go to our base color, browse. And in here, we're going to find, we're going to look for this purple map. That's how you find it easy. And this is the crop image. Okay, let's go to iRay. All right. And unfortunately, like I said, if I'd taken the picture, now remember, this is 12K, okay? So what we're looking at here is a, uh, and I'm not sure, okay, as you notice, they're supposed to be bricks, and bricks aren't square like that. They're long, elongated. And so I assume that the way we would do this would be not that way. Let's see, scale it along the X maybe, yeah. So that they look like this, okay. So uh, here we go. And there we have like a long brick sidewalk kind of thing. How big is our figure going to be? I don't know, but we could put some plants along the edges and stuff. But the thing is, and, and you know, this looks pretty 3D. It's because this image is 12K. It has so much detail in it that it kind of looks 3D all on its own. But now let's take and load in our... I clicked it twice, so it's going to close. All right, here we go. Click it only once. Now we're going to load in our, but we'll do the bump map first, base bump, browse, and that's the black and white image. Look for the purple one. Here is our base bump. Okay, let's see how that changed it. That did something, but it's off. It's not even turned on yet. Let's turn it on some. Let's go all the way. Now look at that. That actually put bumps in it. They're actually physical bumps in it. Okay. There's little like lower down parts and stuff. Look at how detailed that is. Now, if I had taken a very large, if I'd like flown a drone over a big sidewalk, like a, a large brick area, we'd have an entire scene here. Okay. But look at that. Now we turn off the base bump and see what happens. Now you can tell it's just an image, just a flat image. But with that base bump turned on, it actually has little, it ha has crevices. Now let's put our more normal map on, see what that does. Now I, I might have... I might have them backwards. Remember I, remember I inverted the normal map? We might end up with the little bumps popping out and all instead. Now this one goes with goes in full. It's just like on all the way. It, it's, it's on or off. The base bump you can set to 50. But the, the normal map, and if you take a look at the more normal map, yeah, it's, it's definitely there. Okay, so uh, the normal map you're going to notice, especially when you turn like a light from an angle, it's like this is all being lit up pretty, pretty well. Like, and you can also then take this image here, our base color image, and you would prob probably want to put this in the translucency map also. So that would be the crop image. And then just give it a little, and this is a way to darken the image a little bit. It's the way to kind of control the image from another, that translucency. I don't know that you would actually have a translucency layer to brick because it's not like skin where you can see through it kind of thing. So... Uh, but it's just a thought, okay, that you can take your, you could take, you know, a picture of your skin, you know, a very close-up picture of your skin and use it on a figure, that kind of thing. 
uh, with your phone. So, all right, now we have this. So I don't really think I need this translucency weight here. So it's none, it's just one less thing in the image that we have to deal with. So let's bring in a, a character and I have a feeling they're going to be pretty small. So what we would, what we could do is, and what, what you want to learn how to do is we go to Google here and say how to make a seam texture start the starting texture offset the texture repeat the texture repeat again patch the joins fix the errors okay so this is a way to take and take this image and you offset it you change it you 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 do stuff uh, it, there's a whole process here to how to make a seamless texture. So you can take this same texture, make it larger, and make it seamless so that if I were to, uh, so that I could make it much, I have to think about this now. <laughs> My brain is getting de uh All right, so that actually I could take this texture and make it smaller. See, because if I make this smaller here, uh, I, I have to think about this because I, I wasn't going to go into the seamless aspect of it yet, but there is a way to take this and, and make it seamless so you can, oh, so what, when I, so what you do once it's seamless, because now if I take this texture and if I come down here and I go down to, uh, let's see, it was, it's, this should show up in, uh, in texture shaded mode. Uh, yeah, it doesn't show up that well, but all right. When I do uh, vertical, horizontal tiles like this, you know, let's see how it puts a seam here, okay? And there's a way to go into Photoshop so that when you do that to the texture, you tile it horizontally, okay, that you don't end up with those seams. And the same thing with the vertical tiles. You see, there's a, it's just a kind of ungodly little seam here. And this is a way that I could, if I could put up with this seam here, I could take the, if it was seamless, I could take this, uh, um, I could take this texture here, I uh, would be the horizontal vertical tiles. So let's go like this. And then we can take this parameters and we can Z scale. And you see how that works there? And it kind of looks terrible on this because of the bricks, because they're they're a little bit offset, they they're not they're not cropped right. And when I held the camera, I may not have been holding the camera like perfectly vertical. I I may have been like holding it like this, so there's a little bit of a of a like distance effect. Uh, so, but let's just um, let's scale the whole thing here and like this and then scale this Z a little bit more like that. Scale X a little more like this and Z, let's just go all out here. And then what we'll do is we'll go back here to this, to our param plane parameters and we go back to, where is that? I'm not seeing it. 
Sometimes they just disappear on you. Oh, it'd be in surfaces. <laughs> that might do it. Okay, so we would go horizontal tiles like this. If you can put up with the seams, okay, and vertical tiles like this. Okay, then we have a massive thing here. And when we go into iRay, that's a pretty, you know, see, there's our seam right there. But now let's bring a figure into the scene. Jesus, let's see. Because I don't know if he ever walked he, on, uh, you know, modern brick floors, uh, modern brick sidewalk kind of things. But uh, let's see. We need something in the scene to give us perspective, okay? Like, how big are these bricks actually? And so we go here to... And so th the, the way to fix this, because we have... 100 megapixel, 108 megapixel camera here with the, the Samsung S22, 100 megapixels is would be to like take the picture from a window up above the brick and stick it out with a big, huge, uh, you know, some kind of selfie stick and and then give it a command like take picture, you know, and uh and it would uh, take the picture of the, of this uh, of a large expanse, or use a drone. And I don't know that my drone does uh, 100 megapixels, so I think my drone is 4K. So that's 4,000. But 4,000 is not bad if you get a big enough thing. And if you take a 4K image, right? And because you're going to shrink them down anyway then as long as you make it tileable, okay, then these, these you could to get away with a few bricks and, uh, and make a large brick expanse with it. So let's uh, zoom out a little bit more. Now let's put a figure in. Click here, click on that, default. Remember, we shaped this a little bit. It's not like completely flat. And now we go to figures, people. I know it's going to put an animal in here, but it's then it's harder to say, is that a baby animal? Is, you know, it's kind of harder to tell. And what, we're, what we really want is, you know, adult human kind of perspective. Uh, so we're definitely going to go... Uh, Recent first, Genesis 9. I just don't build anything. I don't do anything with the earlier figures anymore. Uh, let's use Cade. Figures. So, here we go. Thank you for the likes, people. You are so kind. You are so kind. So, yeah, this Photoshop being able to make bumps and make just like that and put them on. So what I'm going to be doing is I, I'm going to be taking and photographing textures and I'm probably going to make a huge texture pack and um, and try to sell it like really cheap, like 10 bucks for a thousand textures, you know, kind of thing, because uh, I'm not I'm not out to really make that much if I could get 10 bucks for a thousand textures but these would be like 12k <laughs> textures and if I can make them also and see I didn't expect it to be that him to be that small here so remember we reshaped the ground so we got to take the ground and bring it down a little bit so what we've got to do is make this much smaller here let's see uh, we take the parameters. What are we doing here? Back to surfaces on the plane. And we're going to go horizontal tiles, which would, I can't see what I'm doing. 
Control 9. Well, we got to do them like this. And the vertical tiles. No, the offset is what we want. No, the offset is no. We want how the tiles, how many. We want to make these smaller like this. And I think if I rotate the whole thing, let's see parameters. Thank you for the love. Thank you. Why rotate? We're going to go like this. Okay. We're going to rotate this in 90. And then I think we should be looking at this from the front. Yeah, like that. And we come in here. Now I think the tiles are too still too long and they, they gotta be they're still too big. Uh, so we go to vertical tiles. We're gonna make them smaller like this. And the horizontal tiles make them smaller like that. Okay, and vertical tiles. Okay, a little more. Now it's just a matter of how how much you want to What are the advantages of having a, a of a hundred and eight K to a twelve K sidewalk over a over a four K sidewalk? Well if if you notice the image that I took, okay, these there's only a few tiles here that are populating There are only a few tiles. It's like maybe a hundred tiles. Okay, let's just guess at a hundred. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five, eighty, eighty-five. So it's about a hundred tiles here, okay? What I would need is to take and put like a lot like 500 tiles across this same 12k real estate okay so that there was like 500 tiles so they're all small and then when i bring this image then into daz i wouldn't have to shrink it okay I, or I, it would they would all be a, about you know you shrink it a little bit just to make it fit right but you wouldn't have to shrink you you just you wouldn't have to shrink it like a lot like i had to do because this is a 12k image with gigantic bricks on it and so the obje object so then then what happens is then you think okay because i have to shrink it so much then i have to make it seamless and that is uh that's a, a video for another tutorial on how to make seamless textures, okay? I don't really know how to do it yet, but it will be something that I'm going to do a study on so that when I make this texture pack, that it's going to have, they're going to be seamless tiles, okay? And the thing is, is that once they're seamless, then why not just do them in 4k okay and people are can then they're not so huge and people can download a thousand of them and they're not going to be like massively large well the problem with that is that when you do them in 4k see all of these tiles are all repeated and you see that tile is the same as that tile it's the same as that tile you see you end up with this little patch and so that's why i say 
that if I had taken this, and these were all little itty bitty bitty tiles, I could stretch them out. And then if I, if I were to uh, tile them, they, they would be so large because the, 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 the bricks in the actual image are so tiny that you wouldn't see, you wouldn't, maybe you could even do a whole big patch here of tiles just in this section that wouldn't, I had to shrink them because the tiles were too big for to look realistic. And I think he's floating in the air. Yes, he is. So let's bring this uh, plane up a little bit. So why, 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 why translate? Okay, we gotta go here to this because I can't control L. Do we have a light? No. Okay, why translate? Let's bring this up. Let's see, we're under the ground here a little more. Okay, why translate? Okay, maybe, well, that, that's like a lot. <laughs> All right, so um, let's zoom in on, on his feet. No, the feet. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So let's take this and we'll... Oh, I got to zoom out enough so I can grab this. Okay, this is a plane. Where are our... Where is the... Suddenly I've just glitched out again here. Oh, we have to grab it like this. Okay, I think that works. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, that's good. So, I mean, we can now let's put uh, some clothes on him. Let's see what we got here. And now there are things that you can buy that give you, well, you can buy leaves and, and, and they're, uh, they are deforce leaves, and so you just run a simulation and the leaves all fall all over the ground. You can put dirt and debris, deforce de dirt and debris that, and have it lay on the ground. You can buy decals that lay on this and give it like road signs and graffiti. You can have uh, different uh, mounds and things. Okay, so let's get him some clothes. A wardrobe and let's put him in a gentleman's accessory saved wardrobe I wish there was an all okay so we go oh this is for Genesis 9 uh, 8 I don't want to do with deal with something okay recent uh, Highest first, let's get some actual Genesis 9 stuff. Um, okay, Monday outfit. There we go. Put something all at once on him. Oh, I put it on the plane. Z. That doesn't work. I hope I didn't just undo the the feet. I think I did. No. Okay, let's put the Monday outfit on Cade. There we go. It's so quick. And we'll go to files, poses. Poses. By function, walking. How about walking? Oh, this won't work. Okay, we got a uh, Z. Undo that. 
We have to select it, then go up to our scripts and use this pose converter. And it just does it. But it's probably going to translate him still, so we'll have to move him back to say close. Okay, where are you, Cade? Way over there. There's a way to bring him back to center. I've never, I never, it's never stuck to me how to do that. Okay, where is the center of the scene? It's over here. Okay, front, over. Okay, and let's turn him a little bit. Okay, we'll turn the scene a little bit like this. Like that. Let's rotate him the way we want him to be. Y rotate. No, I'm not thinking I might not want this, but. We'll give it a try. So I think what we'd want him to do is be walking this way. Can I move our camera around? See the repeating pattern? And you see, if I had a ton of bricks concentrated in that 12K, then I would have been able to stretch it out huge and we wouldn't have these repeating patterns. I could probably use one yeah, I could I could use that whole 12k image just maybe for a li and if we had a like repeating pattern, it'd be way out here. Okay, I think I I don't want Okay, what <laughs> what we have to do? Okay, I have him going the way I want him to do. I'm going to take the plane and Cade. We're going to put him in a group. <laughs> Done with fussing with this. Cade and plane. All right, I think I spelled that wrong, yeah. Cade. And we're just gonna take this and we're gonna rotate the whole, we're gonna go from the front and we're gonna rotate the whole thing. Y rotate until I have them. Okay, this is kind of weird how that's working. X translate, move them back a little bit. Okay, let's let's go with this. No. Where's the center of the scene? Where is it? Okay, it's back here. Okay. So we're looking from the front. Okay, let's see what this looks like in IRA. All right. And what we have here now with this thing here is what I'd like to do is just move this up so that seam isn't like right there but now we got another seam here see so it's like this was all a study today and I knew when I was taking a picture of that sidewalk because the sidewalk was a very thin side small sidewalk and then my phone I had it pointed up so it wasn't getting all the bricks and I could only bring it so far away from the sidewalk because my arm was only so high I couldn't get like the whole sidewalk kind of thing uh, and so that's the thing that's the trick is to get the whole texture into your camera frame and get textures that are 
Like if you're going to do a beach and everything, fly a drone over the beach and get the whole beach kind of thing. And, and then you, and then the, the frame, the, even if it's a 4k drone picture, the frame of the, of, of the camera is getting a wide angle. Uh, it's getting a lot of detail in one frame. So if you want a beach, yeah, I'm still turning this thing so to get towards his face. So all right, so. Now, if we take a, so this works, this will work, you know, you think, okay, I'm trying to do massive things, things on a massive scale. I'm trying to do like sidewalks and big, big, big things like, like rock walls and stuff like that. Normally with textures, you do a little patch or you do some pants, you do, you do a, a small texture you take that texture and kind of make it you don't it's not like you're doing entire <laughs> sidewalks like an entire like uh downtown section of of a sidewalk and so you don't have that much okay of area to cover so but what this does is it makes you a it makes you a very large a large large sidewalk if you can get enough bricks in it and now again okay if this was a seamless texture and as you can see there's an issue with this because it's a little bit sunnier, like a brighter up here than it is here. So you'd ha we'd have all of that to make it seamless. I would have to change and mess with the, the brightness of this so that, and I think Photoshop does stuff to help to kind of mend those sides together. Uh, how it does it, I'm not really sure. And it looks like his heel is going right through the floor, but that's okay. Um, we can bring it down a tiny bit like that. Now this heel doesn't look like it's even on the floor now. So oh, because I remember I, I took this plane and I bent it, I moved it around, gave it a little bit of heave and ho to it. So we're going to give him some hair. See, now I can take and bring that up and have like with mesh grabber and pull that up because it's not one big chunk. It's like if you look at this and we go back to our wireframe, it's it's little I can pull this little square up without pulling the whole thing. And so I can just pull that up and have that fit on his foot, touch his foot. I don't have to move his pose I can move the, the floor the ground to fit his his stride so that is another interesting thing that's built into this now okay so we were going to give him some hair how about this hair Danny hair I don't know if this hair is going to fit him but and then we'll uh Let's see what color it is. In the promo image, it's blonde. Yeah, it's blonde here. Let's find the explore product. Materials, black. And that's an H material, so that'll actually work. Now, it's it looks thin because it's not showing fully in the utilities preview on I think even if I turn this preview on it's still not gonna show fully if 
parameters. No, it will only show fully in the render. Let's see what our render is. I really like this Danny hair a lot. Danny hair makes him kind of look uh, Indi like from India. It gives him that India look. Very nice. So uh, look at our sidewalk. That looks so realistic if we didn't have the seam here. And there's a seam here, seam there. So that's something to think about. Now, I think Photoshop me helps mend these seams. It helps bring, bring them in. As long as you have the, the sides cut, if you have it cut and chopped in the right way, like you'd want to cut it across here maybe, but if you can't because it cut, yeah, actually you can because it would cut the brick in half. And so this, it would just, again, it would, it would work. So, but it's a matter of melding. I don't know how it's done. It's not something that I've worked with. I've thought about it uh, a little bit, but um, I have worked actually with some things do seamless tiling automatically if it's like an algorithm, if it's an algorithm kind of material, but this is not, these are photos. This is like real stuff. And so you have to, work with it a little bit, trim it, get rotate it, get it just right. So, uh, and colorize it, get this, there's a little bit of light shining here where it's, see the light here, where it's darker here, all of that has to be fixed so that they meld up together right. And I think Photoshop helps to do that. So, uh, all right. So we, we could kind of mess with this a little bit more. Um, I was thinking about, uh, let's see, ground, let's see. Uh, if we did a, if we did we have a camera in here, don't we? No. Uh, create a camera. I think I don't know if I want him like more like this. And if we create, a camera, from our perspective view. Save this. This is Cade. Cade on a walk. Here we go. All right, and so then we go to I forgot to look at his hair, see if it was, but I know his hair it that it doesn't show. I know about this hair. It doesn't show in the Okay, so let's go to files, ground. Oh, we 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 just take a Favorites, let's go to most shoes. Let's go to ultra scene. And I think we can just take, and if we set the features down to zero so that it doesn't have any altitude to it, features, and we do a road here, something with just a road, this road here like that, dirt track, and ecology, we go with this, grasslands, build. We don't want the aspens. Let's just turn all the trees off for now. Camera. Build a scene. Because what I'm thinking is if I have this plane a little bit above the, the, the road, then we'll have a, 
a brick path instead of a dirt one. So yes, this you just multiply that ability with Photoshop, you know, a hundredfold to just take any any texture that you create, whether if you take a, a picture of a terry cloth towel or everything, and, and a terry cloth towel would give you, you know, there again, you, you know, you'd want that, you'd want to get as big of a, a coverage over your, like if your phone is 4K, over your phone call, you'd want to get as much of the terry cloth as possible, but then you'd want that terry cloth to have a repeating, uh, to be tile uh, seamless. All right, so we're going to go out of here into this. Now we can't move, we have to move Cade and the plane up. We can't move. I don't think I locked my camera, so let's move Cade and the plane up. What's going on here? Oh, remember my I made the plane. I gave the plane all kinds of. Where's our road? There's our road. All right. So what we can do with this is just cut the road out like. Right, this isn't going to work so what I would have to do okay we have another plan we get rid of the plane and what we do is we make a surface thing here like this and we go to our what would it be geometry editor tools Geometry Editor. We start over here. Here. Let's go to... We're already in texture shaded mode. Now we would want to go here to... No. Geometry editor, come on. Well, I thought this. Oh, we have to select the terrain. Okay, there we go. And now we can come through here. Grab this terrain. Somebody's chatting. Sorry, Rex and chat, but my laptop is acting like it did last year. It seems when I render, I lose my audio. So I've got this big X on my speaker icon. I will put, I will be on my cell for a bit. I have no idea when, but when I render a G9 character, my 2000 alienware acts like an idiot um okay i uh, i'm gonna see if i can kind of help you a little bit with that uh art um the laptop um the, is the laptop your alienware okay that's the question and uh, uh i gotta sneeze Because I, um, just to give you, uh, yeah, all right. The thing about laptops is that I just thought I might mention that when you go to, to replace that laptop, thank you. Thank you very much for the, uh, Gesundheit. 
uh, when you go to replace the laptop, buy a desktop. And, and uh, you know, how many times do you, unless you actually take that laptop to work or something, how many times do you actually take the laptop out of the house, like to the library or on the bus or all those reasons why you had to, why you thought, oh, I'll, I'll get a laptop so I can move it around. But I bet it stays most, for most part, people buy a laptop and it sits in the same exact place year after year and never really is mobile. And the thing is, is you say, well, it's compact. That's all of, all of that 2000 that you spent on that laptop was money that went to make everything miniature inside of that laptop. Yeah, 90% of 90% 9% of the time it sits in the same place. And so so most of them a lot of the money. I'm just, I'm not going to say most of it. I would say probably a third of the money that you spend on that laptop went into making everything miniature like a little teeny hard drive and a little teeny uh the keyboard and very con compact little teeny ram and all all the little teeny a little teeny motherboard all of that to make it miniature and so that two thousand dollars one third of that money would have gone into your graphics and into your ram you would have like maybe twice as much ram twice as much graphics power because they didn't have to miniaturize everything and then when you wanted to upgrade your your workstation you'd be able to just take the graphics card out and possibly throw in another graphics card maybe upgrade the the power supply throw in another ram chip you can't do that with a laptop so the, the the next time you buy a computer get a desktop and because they see you coming every time with the with the laptop and i in and, and you know i you know why you know why would i presume to tell you how to uh how, how well thank you I, I i i don't mean to to just like kind of pick on you or anything um, but I used to sell computers at Sears, okay? So I do actually have, when my the first month that I was sold computers at Sears, I was, and I was selling, I was like in my early 30s, and everybody who I sold computers with were like in their 50s and 60s. They had been there since the, uh, they, you know, and they would, they would have me... <laughs> troubleshoot computers when they're when the customers that they sold computers to would bring back their computers they would have me troubleshoot the computers because i just knew everything about computers the first month that i was there i was made employee of the month and and in one i used to sell them at sears in the in the uh after a year, uh, after a year, I was I won an award because I sold uh, uh, I sold in the five percentile of product protection plans and maintenance agreements and sales per hour out of three states. Um, I was in the top t five percentile. Uh, so yeah, I just I do know um, I know comp uh, computers in a in an uncannily in a very uh, very uh, precise in way. And so it's just uh, an AST from Sears. Uh, an Acer? Is that what? I've never even heard of an AST. We used to sell Packard Bells and we used to sell Compacts. And then Acer, we started selling Acers. And uh, so. Yeah, the um, I don't remember. AST was before my time, at least with back. I'd never even heard of that brand before. So, uh, but I'm sure it was very nice. Yeah, so my recommendation is to uh, that when you do finally buy another computer, go with a desktop. 
and uh, get a 4K monitor, and uh, but yeah, a desktop for sure. And you will f you will find that right out of the right out of the gate, that your money was spent on the power of the computer and not on on trying to make everything miniaturized. And so uh, it's just your money will go further uh, over time. You know, unless you're that kind of person who's just got to grab the laptop. My, I bought a laptop and it was like $100, $200. And then I upgraded it because I did all the kinds of research and I upgraded it and put uh, a, a spare, an SSD drive in it, a, big, a fairly big SSD drive in it. I upgraded the RAM and you know what? It sits in the closet and I never, ever, ever use it. Uh, my desktop is 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 what I use, and I use it constantly. So, just uh, just to keep uh, so um, what you might want what what you might want to look into is go to the manufacturer site. If you're having trouble with your audio. Uh, go to the manufacturer, and your audio probably is, you probably have a Realtek um, audio, like, um, graph, uh, audio interface inso built inside a sound card. A Realtek sound, not as be as like a sound chip, it would be a chip that's in there. And download the actual Realtek. If you're using the, the built-in audio that's in the, in the, the computer, download the whole Realtek. Yeah, so what you want to do is go to the manufacturer site of the, to Alienware and find the web page on that and download, because what, what you end up with sometimes is, uh, sometimes they put out new drivers for all of that stuff and Microsoft won't like offer them in the updates. So I would, and, and there's also a thing called chipset drivers. I would also find, see if you can find an update for your chipset drivers. And if you can find an update for your chipset drivers and your Realtek, a later version of the Realtek, you might find that your audio isn't so glitchy and that it might stay put. Mine's constantly changing. I have to go into it and it switches to, you know, when I get a new, I when I install something new on the computer and have to restart the computer, it'll change and it'll like all of a sudden it's back to, because I have about five different, audio, I have about six or seven, maybe eight different audio devices connected to my computer. And so, uh, and I keep them shut off. My my two NVIDIA graphics cards. My monitors have audio devices built into them. I use three monitors, uh, and each one of them has audio, like sound card stuff built into them so that you can play the audio through them. So it's constantly switching to some other output source and jumping around. But if it's doing this just because, you know, you're, you're rendering, um, that, that sounds like it's, you have a conflict. And I would go into your device manager and look and see if, uh, if you have anything listed there that says other, that where like there's no driver for it. And you might have to do some research to find out because you could have like a, a driver that's not installed on there that should be or or that if it's some drive like the some drivers have been deprecated over time like they like there's this thing this intel thing thing that was had something to do with memory management uh with dealing with your your multiple chips like uh your with uh and that they, they they got did away with that, but the drivers sit there and they they're still there and and it, set, and it constantly sits there, and those should actually be turned off. Okay, so we're gonna right click here, and we're gonna go geometry assignment, and create a surface from selected, and this is gonna be brick. Brick. 
brick. Let's see if this works, how it works, how well it works. I don't know. Uh, so now we can go to our terrain and we can go to surfaces. We should see something called brick and base color, browse, and let's find our bricks. It would be one of these blue ones. Okay, so the, we want that for our main color, base color. And we'll mess with that, uh, the sizing, the tiling later. I don't know if it, this is going to work. Because the brick won't, it's going to look like it's just kind of done in a weird pattern. So it's not going to follow it around. So probably a bit. I, I, what I could do is use... Uh, let's let's use a gravel some kind of gravel i i took some gravel pictures they won't be that 4k uh the 12k but they'll work better so we'll go to browse i don't want to use the tar this uh, i took some sand let's, this is it i think let's see what this looks like open <laughs> i think this is gravel no, that's the sidewalk. Let's close this. Where is the gravel? This might be the gravel piece. Properties, open. No, that's the beach. <laughs> the shells on the beach. This might be gravel. Oh, I think that's... No, that's not it. Here, this might be gravel. Open. No, that's tar. Okay, I think... What's this? Open. No, that's a rug. See what you can do. And that's only 4K. Where did the gravel go? This might be it. Open. Now that's tar. I think that's tar. It's hard to tell. Now that. Well, it will work. This, this is a gravel. Okay, open this. That's the gravel, okay. So this is 132809. Let's see which one of these looks best. Oh, I guess we're going to use that one then. 132809, what was this now? This is called 132805. All right, we open up Photoshop. File, open. Okay, this is one three two eight zero nine. I have to double check. My brain is like a sieve. Eight oh five. Good. I glad I checked. File, open. Three two eight zero oh, five. All right, and there's my foot. So I've got to take and crop this. Crop my foot out of it. 
image crop. Okay, we're going to save this file, save as PNG. And this is going to be a uh, crop. All right. This is only 4K, around 4K. And then we go file. Now we can take this image and we can go to filter, 3D, generate bump map. There's our bump map. Say OK. Come on. Why does that look so blurry? I don't think it's done. See? Let's try again. Let's, uh, Select all. Okay, now let's try again. Filter. Now 3D is like not, okay, I guess. Filter. Height map. Yeah, it's the bump map that's the height map. Okay. One of these we inverted. Okay, now the white part, this is right, okay? Because if you notice the white part, I believe, is the part that is higher. And the black part is the lower part. I'm not positive, but we're going to invert that. File. I don't know why it doesn't look 3D extrusion. Yeah, but does GIMP, does GIMP do uh, bump maps and, let's ask Google. I bet it doesn't, just because uh, Okay, has a bump map filter that creates a 3D effect by embossing an image. Okay, but uh, I'm not see as a bump map filter. All right, so here is a, uh, a video on it. Okay, so if you see how this is done in Photoshop, you will be able to use GIMP. Image editing software. All right, it's not fair for me. I'm going to subscribe to her just because I always do and like. But um, this is using GIMP for bump and normal map creation. So that's very good to know. Tex Texas TX Ghost. Very good. Yeah. See, I um, I get a deal on Photoshop. I I. I call them up once a year and I tell them that you know I I really don't make much money I, like my my dad's channel isn't even monetized I don't even make money from this channel and once you know once my YouTube uh, channels start to really generate income I don't mind paying them because I I get Photoshop I get After Effects I get Premiere and I get uh, Illustrator and those are the four programs that I use so I don't mind, but I, I don't pay the full 50 bucks a month because I just call them up and say I, I can't afford it. And they give me a year uh, that's it's just uh, uh, at a lower at a discounted rate. And when I can afford it, I will. But uh, 35 bucks a month is not bad for those four programs. And so it's somewhere in around that. So 3D extrusion, okay, uh, extrusion, okay, uh, 
3D volume. Okay, this we go to fill. Oh, okay, we don't want an exclusion. Okay, I, I, I already did this. So now we undo this. Okay, did I save this? This would be file, save as. And okay, so we're going to save this would be uh, instead of crop, we're going to call this bump map PNG. And then we'll save this also. See, this is kind of easy, though, how, how you do it here. I don't know how GIMP does it. Z, control Z. Undo that. And now we're going to go. The only thing I don't really like, I don't like the, the uh, it didn't look incredibly, uh, I, maybe it, did, it doesn't need to be. It didn't look incredibly detailed for this um, 3D normal map. Okay. This one looks pretty detailed, though. And you see how this is an indentation? And I would think you would want that to be to stand out so that it pops up. That's just kind of my easy. That's done. Easy peasy. Save as. So that's how easy it is in Photoshop. I don't know how easy it is uh, in GIMP, but this is going to be the normal map. See, I knew that, you know, I was going to be catering to an obscure audience because not everybody wants to put out the expense for Photoshop. But this is kind of, it's it just opens the idea of, and there are free programs out you can download off the internet that allow you to make normal maps and bump maps, but they are impossibly hard to figure out how to use. This just did it. Okay, and that's the thing here with this. So, so now we have this base color. We're going to change this now to our, we're looking for normal maps here. It, this is it. Uh, this would be the uh, 805. This one would be our crop 805. Okay, that's that for our base color. And then we would go to our bump map. which is the black and white one. Come on. Browse. This one, the bump. And the, uh, here, this would be our normal map, 805. Okay. And we have to turn up the bump. Okay, so now let's go back here. Let's move our character into the middle of the road and see what our... And what we have to do is make these rocks smaller. So we would go here to our horizontal tiles this way, like this. And vertical tiles like this. Okay. And let's move our character Cade over. See what our road looks like. Well, that looks terrible. Oh, that's because we didn't, um, we have to re render. Oh, and if I do that, I'm going to lose. Oh, so what you do 
you take this terrain, the terrain here, ultra scene terrain, and you copy it. Okay, we gotta go out of here. A Z, escape. All right, edit. Duplicate the terrain. And then I think you gotta un make sure it's unparented, unparent. Okay. Now we can go back here to our ultra scenery, ultra scene favorites, because what it'll do is take this all and change it again. So we go back to most use ultra scenery and we go build. Let's do some of these seedlings. Just see what they look like. Uh, we have to change our camera perspective. Create <coughs> new camera. And then what we do is we take this camera here and delete it. No, I don't think we can delete it. I think we have to open it and switch it. Can't delete it when it's in in ultra scenery, you have to switch it, then delete it. Well, it says camera none. I don't know why that was, but we got camera two now. And we can build the scene. Yeah! Thank you for the likes, people. Thank you very much, very much. So, yeah, I, I probably... Now... Does GIMP have a like paid version where you can pay them if you want? And do, like, does the free version just kind of give you some basic skills and allow you to save like only so many times? And because if that's the case, then yeah, it's really kind of like a gateway. Does GIMP have a paid version? No, GIMP is free, doesn't have a paid version. GIMP is a short, is short for G, GNU image manipulation, and it's available for uh, another offering. is a free to download and use, and includes features for image co composition, photo retouching, and image authoring. Some say GIMP has powerful t editing tools that rival premium software, which they mean uh, Photoshop. It probably does. A lot of people use is is GIMP also uh, is is GIMP uh, open source? Yes, GIMP is open source. So yeah, it probably will eventually rival Photoshop. Look what Blender is doing. Uh, I, I'm going to stick with Photoshop because it's what I know. Uh, but I think I'm going to install it uh, for sure and check it out. Okay, so close this. Now let's see what our scene looks like with... Now what I have to do is turn off the other ground, which I don't know if it's going to let me do to just turn off the ground. We shall see. This just looks horrible. That's what fo the thing about about uh, ultra scenery is that they don't use a very. See, this didn't work. It didn't rebuild the, the ground at, at all. So, uh, what happened here? Camera two is. Okay, what did I do wrong? And the rose kind of looking okay. Let's see. Camera two. Okay, we're looking through camera two. Ultra scene. Favorites. What did I do wrong? It may be because I...
because I altered the terrain like that. Let's see, most used. I should have like copied the terrain, then altered that copy of it. Uh, So it, it, it brought all this. Oh, we have the wrong camera. Camera two. That's why. Okay. I don't know. I think I just, I, yeah, I just generated in a completely new ultra scene. We have two of them in the scene. Okay. That's why. All right. Ghost light of most used ultra scenery. Ultra scene. Okay. Go here. Camera two, and we said we we're going to turn on the seedlings, rebuild the scene. Let's see. The Linux of Photoshop or the Blender of Photoshop might be a better way to say it. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I know. A lot of people are using GIMP right now. Uh, a lot of people I haven't mentioned in, I've had it mentioned here in, in these tutorials many times by, by subscribers, you, you awesome people. And so every time it gets mentioned, I learn something more about GIMP and, uh, So, uh, I, I will, pro and I probably, if I went into GIMP, it would prob it probably looks uh, quite a bit like, uh, like, uh, Photoshop. So it's probably not that much of a, a learning curve to learn it. Okay. So this should give us now a, a new thing here. Okay, see that doesn't look too bad. Uh, the thing is, is my rocks are. Uh, I might. Uh, let's go here to nine here. I want to zoom in on the rocks. See if I did something really terrible with them. Okay, let's get rid of the other camera. Okay, that's so it's just out of the way. We'll just name. Oh, I can't change the name of the camera. All right, so we're going to go to per perspective view and and now let's take a look at this road and just see what this texture really looks like. Yeah, you can see the that it's not seamless. It's not that bad though. It's the uh it's not coming out under the it's not as nice as the uh ultra scenery. They've done some really kind of funky stuff with like what kind of bothers me about uh, it's ultra scenery and I don't really understand a lot about how they did this because when you look at ultra scenery in wireframe mode this well we turn off the other terrain here this terrain doesn't really have a massive geometry to it it's like they start they make it with a very and how they stretch the image over this is like a mystery to me because when you look at the terrain when you turn everything off here on 
ultra scenery. You turn all these things off like this. Or we could just look at the terrain image. We want to the terrain on. Okay. And then we go here. This, uh, and we have our other terrain turned off. It's like how they achieve this result with this. It's like magic because it's something that it's not like these these are not like different surfaces like this isn't this rock side is in a different surface there this is all one surface that's been generated somehow like algorithmically to blend into the grass and and this particular surface isn't bad it's look like they put a little bit more uh, and we go into the surfaces here and we select the terrain We take a look and look, this is like not not your typical eye ray, like preview color, soil diffuse color, soil layer normal, ground cover diffuse color. And why is there a diffuse color in eye ray? See all the ground layer normal repair. <laughs> layer diffuse color again it's like what is this little creature road surface layer mask yeah this uh these ultras what they did to make ultra scenery work and this is the base layer diffuse color isn't this supposed to be a base color is it, it's it's not supposed to be diffuse because diffuse but then it may be like PBR which now seems to work with iRay uh, it's this is this just the terrain to try and ex understand how they make this terrain because it's like I'd like to make I'd like to put my own textures here on the road i'd like to be able to do things like that take my own photos or you know where this is some kind of ground dirt photo okay so if we were to take this uh road layer diffuse color okay uh that's the diffuse color where's the soil okay this looks like the same thing okay this is uh Let's just take and change this color to, to my image here. Browse. And, oh, I changed it. Now that changed the wrong thing. I didn't expect it to change that. So we go to browse. Okay, let's just undo that. Z, we know what that changes. Uh, soil layer. Okay, that would be under. Okay, this is starting to make a little bit of sense. The soil layer, what if we change that to something else? Okay, that's the soil under the grass. Okay, so we go Z. The ground layer, soil layer normal. Okay, that kind of makes sense. That would be this, the normal under the soil layer. Okay, and then the ground cover layer. Let's see what this is. Okay, whatever that is, is some kind of layer on the ground again. Uh, it might be on top of the ground. 
Z on top of the grass. And then we have road base layer. Okay, that is our uh, wow. Control Z. So, all right, what? And then we have road surface layer. So, this is where we would want to put, okay, Z, our map, the road surface layer. So our, my image that I took here, the, the, and if I had even like a 12K image, like the one that um, if I had taken the right camera thing with my camera today, but it switched to 4K on me. Okay, where are we? Uh, desktop. Here it is. Now we're going to use these. The, uh, the, this would be the... This one, the crop layer. See what that does. Okay, let's zoom in on this and see, take a look at it up close here. Okay, it's a different color. It's, but, uh, and that now the uh, road surface layer, diffuse color. What's this? Are they the same? Okay. That's a, a road base. Okay, this is a road surface. Road surface layer mask. Okay, normal. Okay, so let's load our nor road surface normal. Okay, uh, to desktop. Okay, so we go to Samsung phone. And here it is. This is uh, the bump, which would be... Oh, that's our normal uh, here, the normal map. Okay. Now I could take this road surface layer and just kind of color it a little bit, make it. we go all right so we're learning something here so we can get rid of this other ultra scenery terrain too and the, the thing is is that uh, I could take this road surface here because it it, it a little bit tiny we I'm not sure that co coloring it like that is the best thing to do so we go to the terrain again road surface and then we could just okay where is okay horizontal tile road surface this is good so what if we go to 20 We'll have a little bit less repeating of the pattern, 20. There, that's a little bit more natural looking. It's just how do we bring in our own stuff? And now this, uh, that's iRay. Let's put in a, a, a an HDRI so the world isn't so gray looking. Smart content. That was a major breakthrough for me, okay, because I have been trying to figure out how to get my own roads in, how to change the water texture to, to my own water textures, how to do this verge, this side part, and each one is a different image that it lays over automatically, I guess, for you into, into the hierarchy. And it does it along 
the geometry of this this of the of the the, the landform that it's generated that to me is like amazing because I have been looking to be, figure out how to do that for a very long time. And it looks like there's another texture underneath this one. Okay, so we're going to go here back. Render settings. Let's find some kind of render pack. All right. Here we go. Maybe this one. Oh, okay, now I have to go back to the camera view. Oh, and I turned off all of the... Ecology. Well, road pebbles. Come back. I don't know if these aspens, if they, they're going to work. Okay, let's save this. Daisy's layer. Well, that worked. It sure did. Now, what I don't see is a bump map layer. We go to the terrain. Uh, what's kind of nice is that you could, like, make that layer, you know, anything now. Not sure that I like that sky. Let's try a different sky. But yeah, I mean, this is the, the road image that I took. This is a 4K road. Take a look at it again. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty nice image right there, 4K. I took that on with my phone today. So that this is what I'm trying to do is say, you know, Put your own things into stuff. Put your own images. That's what this is about, is to, to make you into, like all of a sudden I felt like today that I became a texture, you know, guru, you know, because I was going around taking pictures of grass lawns, of like places where there was no like litter, you know, and taking, trying to take pictures of grass lawns and and the thing is, is that my my Samsung S22 phone will take 108 megapixel images. That's 12K. Uh, you know, it, it's just why aren't why isn't everything in the scene something from and so it, then it's like a, i thought okay i need to make a folder and i i have the folder now and i'm just going to put all every texture in the world maybe break up my images and say this is stone this is rocks those are rocks this is glass i don't know how i take pictures of glass i've already thought about it but it's like just all of this stuff. Um, glass is usually an algorithm. Uh, so that's not something you take a picture of and you use it as a shader. But stones and marble and stuff. And so so you go to like the, the, the if you live in like a, a large city, you go to the Capitol building and take a picture of the marble floor in the Capitol building. Or you do that kind of thing so that you have this 
And if you do it from up in the rotunda, you can get the whole floor with a with a, you know a a a hundred and eight megapixel with twelve K, and you can literally put that floor in your on on a plane and put it in your artwork. It's just why not put you know look here's a rock wall. This rock wall right here is. I, my phone glitched out on me and did it in 4K. I've got to go back and take another picture of it. In, in, uh, but you know what? Why take a picture of this rock wall in, in 12K when it's too small of a wall? You know, it's like the wall ended right up above here and it ended right down below. You could see a few little bit of so it it's unless i find a way to ter, to make this wall seamless uh it's not going to work uh, and so you have to think about logistically and say well what i i have my hallway op door open and i'm echoing i can hear the echo coming down from the hall so the what you want to do is find the biggest rock wall you can find okay and then take a picture of that with and then you can shrink it and it won't matter because because you know if i put my figure here and these stones are like gigantic you know i can't make them smaller and you know that much smaller especially if if that my figure is like really tall kind of so you you have to think about that and think about how to turn things into tiling and all of that and so but if you can get a, a large like find a, a a large like gravel road thing not like a parking lot that's made of gravel and fly a drone over it and if you take that picture of that parking lot with the drone image and are able to get the whole parking lot, you run around, pick up the trash for them and all, and, and take a picture of a big, huge parking lot, then you've got something there that's really, really... And I have a drone. My drone does, does uh, 4K at 60p. But I don't know if it does bigger... Um, does higher megapixels if I'm just snapping images I'm not sure about how that works exactly so but the idea would be to get a a drone that does like 12 megapixel images and then if you get all these other parts of the parking lot you can always crop it but then when you zoom in you have like this massive 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 amount of detail Oh, that's awesome software tools about textures and normals to do skin textures for a character. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, well, uh, now once you get your, once you get, once you get your, your texture made, then it's just a matter of going into GIMP or Photoshop and and having it spit out the normal and spit out the uh, the the bump map uh, for uh, for your texture and we're kind of, this is something that that's what this was this you know when I, I when I, if I went you know this this tutorial has already been close to three hours I mean how am I going to like go over all of this and I did do some prep for this tutorial. I learned before I even did this tutorial, I learned how to, well, I went out and took these photos. Thank you very much for the compliment on, on timing and, and doing this tutorial. So yeah, I, I took spent all all morning going out and taking these images for for this tutorial and the and then I thought well 
I can't just say, well, here are these, you know, you can make your own, you can make your own surfaces, uh, shaders, and I couldn't really do that without saying, but here is also how you do, how you make your normals and how you make your bump maps. And so I had to do like an hour and a half, two hours worth of research to figure out how to make to uh, bump maps and tutor and uh, and normals, and then I had to do and then I had to do like a dummy scene kind of, and I used uh, big rocks and stuff, and 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 I had to do all that before I could do this tutorial because I didn't want to come into this tutorial and say let's all watch YouTube videos <laughs> and learn how to do all this. So, you know, that's, uh, that's not the way to do this is the, the way to do it is have, have at least some, some knowledge of how to do this stuff first. But since considering that these tutorials are three hours long, there's no way I would have been able to script like a three hour tutorial, you know, it, three, cause this is may end up being four or five hours long by the time we're done. So, uh, and I never dreamed that. And so what we have, this is a tree bark texture. So basically I can just take this and look, this tree bark, um, not this one in particular, but uh, where's the one that is, this one, I believe. No, this one. No, it's not that one. Where is it? This one. This one right here is 12K. So when I zoom in on this, look at this. Look at the t detail in this. This is why you want to take your images at 12K. And so that marble floor, if you take it from the picture from the top of the rotunda, even up close, it's going to have detail. It's going to have massive detail. So, and you may only need to tile it like a little bit on the edges that are far away in the distance from the center of your scene. So uh, that's the thing you want to think about this. Look at this, this, when you, when you zoom in, you can see the little bits of lichen and stuff and just it's this is amazing in the burl here of the knot just really amazing and i tried to get some of the burl here this is another part i think of the same image this one came out a little bit but look at this what you just as you're zooming in you just kind of gasp because the texture is so amazing and this is why um now, I believe the Samsung Galaxy S23, and I think they're up to the S24. Um, let's, let's Google this. I don't think they have the same megapixels. How many Maybe the S24 has more ultra. Might be like 200 or something. 200 megapixels. Yeah, that's, that's it might be 200. It's like, yeah, uh, 200 megapixels. So this one is 108. So you could just imagine, and that now that makes me think, I gotta trade in my... <laughs> I got to trade in my phone. I probably could get a, maybe a good amount off of it on it and uh, get a 200 megapixel camera. Uh, 200 me megapixel main camera. So that's what you take. It's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, 50 megapixel. And the Sony that I just bought, it's a, a Sony, uh, Alpha, is it Alpha 
Alpha 7, Alpha 4, Alpha 7, 4. What is it again? I forgot. Alpha 7, 4. Yeah, um, it's only 33 megapixels. And these phones are at like 200 megapixels. And it's, it's not always about megapixels. Sometimes it's about bursts, shooting bursts of fixed images. Sometimes it's about uh, the sensor the sensor size, like full frame and, and being able to capture light and, and detail in those megapixels. So I, I don't understand a lot about this yet. Uh, but I, I know that uh, at least having 33 three megapixels on a full frame, fr full frame sensor is, is, is really huge. Uh, so I don't I really, uh, yeah, and, and I have to learn, you know, and software tools, this is our, this is our, our business because, you, you know, when you say you don't know much about cameras, but when you think that every day in DAS, when we work in DAS, we work with cameras. It's like one of the first things you put in a scene is a camera. And, and the thing is, is that that camera has depth of field, it has, you know, f-stops, it has the the uh, width was going to 35 millimeter, all of that stuff is part of our, yeah, and, and to think, and so it's not that much of a jump from, you know, Daz's camera to like what I'm looking at right now, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Sony Alpha. It cost me uh, $2,000 for the camera and like another, uh, well, it was like a thousand, a thousand, uh, thousand eight, nine, eight, nine hundred, and then another uh, $1,000 for the lens. So it's $3,000 right there that I'm looking at right now. I just purchased this and it's sitting on my credit cards. <laughs> And they're going to come and take me away. And when, when you don't see me anymore, you know what happened, okay? So, but this is, uh, uh, this is, and, and then you, once you get the camera, then you start learning about shutter speed and, and about uh, uh, white balance and ISO and f-stops and they they're and they're it's not that hard to understand these things yes it might take you a week or two weeks of just watching every single youtube video over and over and over and over and it's like a language until all of a sudden you start speaking the language fluently like if you look at my hands when i move them like that it turn they turn green notice how gr they turn green do you know why they turn green well because first of all i have a a green screen behind me and it's because the shutter speed isn't high enough okay that's why it turns green but when i shut this turn the shutter speed up it becomes less low light sensitive and then i have to mess with the turn the iso up and then it becomes more that it, it introduces more noise these are the kinds of things that you start to work with and learn about uh and i and i would assume that so and then and, you know and it all really a lot of it comes down to sensor size but when you're talking about shooting like textures outside in broad daylight you don't you don't have to have the full frame sensor because you, there's plenty of light outside. There is plenty of light. And so the sensor isn't going to be deprived of light so much that it you need to have this massive uh, se sensor and and the, the with the with the shutter wide open and all on it. So to absorb the light. So, but um, now uh, we'll go back into DAS. So, uh, 
So yeah, but if you figure a Samsung Galaxy, this this phone right here, this 200 megapixel phone <laughs> camera, uh, that is a dream come true for filming textures, okay? Because that it's going to pick up and the thing is, is that uh, you want to talk about like filming, uh, you know, how do they film, how do you film skin? Well, you have to get a model and make them take all their clothes off. And then you take a series of photos and you piece them all together with software. And what, what would be better to piece together uh, software than a 200 megapixel camera that is going to take take that 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 any picture you, you go you do a close up of their hand and and then you have to do like you have to do the hand and then you have to take pictures sideways of each finger you have to go in the ear and you have to go around the ear the back of the ear you have to get the back of the ear and you have to piece them together it's very difficult to piece them together that when you when you order things from the dad's store and it says taken from you know photograph high resolution photographs and everything i will guarantee you they're not using a 200 megapixel camera okay they're probably using maybe a maybe a 24 megapixel camera so that's the uh the thing uh that, so 200 megapixels, that's the back camera, the, the main camera, the, the really big camera on the back. It's not the front camera. Uh, and you have an ultra wide lens, probably on a 50 megapixel 5X periscope looms, zoom lens. So you can zoom in on the 50 megapixel lens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> Software tools. I don't know if, uh, uh, so. So that's, uh, yeah, this is, so, but I would say even if you have, like, if you don't have the Samsung Ultra and you have, like, a, uh, uh, even if you have, like, 30, 20 or 30 megapixels, that's still a lot of megapixels to, to take pe textures with. So, because these, these images here, were uh, these are um, these this image here is 4k your camera probably for sure takes 4k this is a 4k image here look at the resolution of that when I zoom in that's like pretty good we're zooming in this little teeny section and that was like this section here you know it's that's that's 4k Actually, this is 2K. If I look at this, yeah, we put this over. Oh, it's 4K. It's 4,000 pixels. And so, like, I was thinking, like, this picture here. Uh, this is... Now, I accidentally took this picture with a, a 4... This is 4K, but I could have taken this picture with a, with, if I had only set it to take it at 12K with my phone, because it takes 100, 100 megapixels, 108 megapixels turns out to be 12K. Now, I what I could have done was taken this picture, zoomed in on these windows, and they would have been crystal clear. And I could have put this on a plane in the back of, of a scene in Daz and had this like massively sharp image of these office, office buildings in the background. Uh, you know, uh, it's just there's so much you can do with your camera to, to and bring these in and then you get... What you do is you take and make the bump maps and you make the the uh, normal maps. And then this has like little bump. Then it doesn't, it's not just a flat image. These actually 
protrude out and have shadows and, and catch the light and do all kinds of really cool stuff with this. I mean, I didn't just take this picture because, oh, that's a cool building. I took this picture because of this. <laughs> this is really cool right here. And unfortunately, I was just didn't realize that my camera, every time I turn it on, it switches back to 2K, to back to 4K. And from the uh, every time it goes to sleep and I turn it back on, the camera's back to uh, back to two, back to uh, 4K instead of 12K. And just imagine what we would be seeing right now if this was 12K. So it's just, uh, and that's what that's what these bricks are. These bricks right here. This these are 12K bricks. And when you look and say, oh, that's they're cool, you know, but look how cool they really, really are. So yeah, this is that's uh, what this is a camera. This is this is paradise. This is Daz Studio Paradise. Because you can just you can I live in a city. I live in a you know, it's not a massively big city. But when you figure I could go down by the by the by the river where they have uh where the swimmers are and all and catch a time when there's nobody swimming on a sunny day and and just grab this massive massive 12k like image and just put it in the back of of an ultra scenery piece you know uh and and then it's just this massive waterfalls things like that why why mess with these kind of fake like waterfalls with like water that looks kind of plastic and stuff when you can just take a picture of a waterfall of a 12k picture of it off in the distance and put it right in your scene on a plane and uh that's those are the kinds of things uh to think this this right here i just happened to switch my camera on when i took this picture to 12k and those are my shoes, of course. That what would a picture be without some shoes in it? But when you zoom in on this, look at the textures of this, and you talk about like making it using them for a, an alien spaceship or something inside. This just this is this is like I said, texture paradise. It really, really is. These these are the kinds of things that that you can use. And like this, this picture right here is probably one of the nicest pictures that I took today. Unfortunately, it was uh, only at 4K. Imagine if this had been taken at, uh, uh, this would be the most awesome backdrop for, you know, a staircase, uh, for a 3D staircase to be going in front of it, you know, and you could warp this put it on a plane and warp it a little bit so it's not so flat looking and then you put your normals and you put your uh bump maps on this and you then you have this when you zoom when you look at it it's just looks this looks like a picture you know you, you, it's like saying well it does look very 3d but really once you put those normals on and the bumps on it like it's like it then it pops and then you realize yeah it is just a picture so and you take the shine off in Daz you just turn the shine to black so it's not it's not shining like a picture like a Polaroid or something you have to take the shine off of it or to some degree uh yeah lower the shine but um, that's what this is about. Now these these pictures came out, and then you just like you you, you say, well, I don't know that I'd ever use this for anything, but it, they're textures. That's what they are. And if I wish I had taken this at tw at twelve k, that was at four k again. I just I really kind of messed up today. This one right here. This one's at twelve k. And you look at this so you can stand back from it and take a picture of it 
but then you can just zoom in and in and in. So uh, this is 12K. I was quite a, quite a ways away from this, but this would be a kind of cool picture right here about like that in the background. Reminds me of some, you take, uh, take uh, and draw a square, a circle around that and have a Daz, uh, uh, have Photoshop take it out with its AI. Does GIMP have AI? Yes, GIMP has an AI plugin that can create images from text, enhance images, creation, and transfer styles. That's a reason to download and install GIMP like immediately. Because every AI, because it may be there, the people training it are like, they might be training it like crazy. The plugin can be installed by copying the Python. Oh, this doesn't sound like fun. Into the plugin folder. Why isn't it just there? Hello. And then, you know, when I think about Blender, it's like, oh, Blender is, it, Blender is open source and it's free and everything. And it's also like incredibly hard to use. And uh, it just reminds me of uh, Un Unreal Engine, where you, you it takes me an hour to figure out how to render, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, I'm, I can't, you know, it's like I have to put in all this render stuff and just, you should just have a button like Daz where you can just click render, you know? And yes, you can go in and dicker with the settings and render at higher resolutions or have it render longer or whatever, but uh, it's just a button it, that's like, what's up with this? And, but you know, uh, the, the, all it, the, unreal, you have to have the camera in, you have to have all these things. And so, uh, but GIMP has AI. So uh, download. So, well, I guess once it's installed, it's like, uh, GIMP downloads. Oh, the stable version. <laughs> well, we don't. Uh, I don't want to do it by BitTorrent uh, directly. How many? How many? Uh, on the Microsoft Store, we've got it here. On the Microsoft Store, this is two point one zero three six. So these are all the. Let's get it from the micro. Open the Microsoft Store. Uh, don't make me sign in, please. GIMP install. Now it's going to put it on my on my solid state drive, which is okay. I think I have two terabyte solid state drive, four terabyte solid state drive, and it's partitioned off. Uh, so it's two terabytes, I think, each. Yeah, this is uh want to talk about drives. This is this is how many hard drives I have. Uh this one is was I so it's 2 terabytes, I guess. So this one's 2 terabytes of uh a 1 ter this is a 2 terabyte solid state that's been partitioned into two of the other terabytes here. This is a uh um this right here is 18 terabytes. This one's 8 terabytes. This one's 12 terabytes. It's almost full. This one, this is a solid state drive. This is another 8 terabytes. Yeah! <laughs> and this one's 4 terabyte. This is where my DAS stuff is. Uh, this is where I have 10,600 DAS. And I only have three terabytes left. I mean, only I only have 974 gigs left. Yeah. And then this is another solid state drive here. So, and this is the 18 terabyte drive. That's what I would suggest. And, and Art, this is, this is another advantage to having a desktop is that all of your your that because when you put 
a hard drive in your computer, you can achieve faster speeds a lot of times through USB um, because it's right internally and everything. And they're also more robust than external drives. External drives are meant to put the data on. And for the most part, unless you pay a lot of money for a, for a heavy duty external drive, most of them are not heavy duty. And that's why they're a little cheaper. They say, oh, an external drive. Why is it like, why is it $40 cheaper than the internal one when you got all that plastic stuff? Because it's not heavy duty. It's meant to put stuff on it and put it on a shelf for 10 years. So uh, that's what external drives are for, is to put stuff on and stick it on a shelf. They're not for gaming. They're not for like bringing your DAS models and working every day and pu pulling all your stuff from DAS models. No, you will have your, your external. doesn't matter because if you're... All I can say is keep your projects on like your internal hard drive. Don't put your projects on an external drive because that external drive is going to die very soon. And that's the thing. Internal drives are heavy duty. They're meant to last years and years and years. Internal drives, external drives can't handle uh, gaming. They can't handle all that stuff. It will just die on you. And I've had many external drives die. And the reason why I know this is because I called like Taiwan and I asked them, I, I said, what's wrong? Why is this external drive? Why? Because my external drive went bad. And they said, we'll replace this for you with an a with we'll replace this external drive with an, a heavy duty extra. They were really, really nice with a heavy duty drive. But we're going to give you a, a, a lesson and say, you don't take an external drive and put it in, inside your computer. They're not heavy duty. They're not made for gaming. They're not made for accessing constantly and putting stuff back and back and forth like working with DAS. They're not made for that. If you're using an external drive for that, it's only a matter of time. So only put the stuff that you can download and put on another drive from DAS on there, like all your models and stuff, put that on the external drive. If that's what you're doing, do not put your projects on that external drive, okay? Because it's going to die unless you go out. And another piece of advice, if you're going to buy an external drive, spend the money and get a not an, an external drive. Like I said, I would get an internal drive but um, spend the money um, and get a, a well, get a heavy duty one, but also get the biggest one you can afford because eventually you're going to want another one. <laughs> and, and it's just all the less time it'll take before you have to buy another one. And so see my C drive is only got 128 gigs free. I'm going to have to go through it and uh, uninstall stuff. This is a four terabyte DAS drive, and that's got only got that's got one terabyte left. And then I'm gonna stop buying DAS stuff. It's that simple. <laughs> it's like no, I'll have to buy an eight terabyte drive. So and hopefully they'll be down uh, in price. This this is a solid state drive, so I, that's why I can bring all my stuff in really quick. Another eight terabyte drive that's only full. It's only got two terabytes left. This is another, uh, this is a uh, 500, uh, this is a 500 uh, gigabyte drive that's got my games on it, like so that they load quick. And when they, when I have to, when I die and I have to load it again, I don't have to sit and wait. 12 terabytes. This one's only got two terabytes free. That one's almost full. Eight terabytes. This has got three terabytes free. So yeah. This is data, data, data. You just have, I, I, uh, I edit movies and put them on uh, my other channel. I have to keep all my data. So, and I've had this 18 terabyte drive for a while. That's got 11 terabytes free, but I don't take it for granted that that's going to stay empty that long. So... Yeah, and now that I've decided to start taking, um, thank you for all the likes, people, on the video. You're very nice. I don't plan, uh, you know, 
now that I plan on taking, you know, uh, 100 megapixel pictures, and uh, let's just see these, these few little pictures here. Okay, GIMP is installed. Let's uh, go here. Uh, I'm doing too much at once. GIMP. And let's put this in my taskbar so we can kind of play around with that. All right, so we'll remember. It's like, what did I do last night? Oh, my God, I installed GIMP. So, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> okay. So, um, let's see now. Uh, uh, so, the other, this folder, it's just got a few pictures in it. Let's see. This is nice. That was with the new, uh, the new. Uh, I cannot believe I've learned how to replace the road texture, the, the margin texture, all of these textures on here. That, you know what? Um, you know what that means is that you can, you can take the, uh, and put higher resolution textures on the ground because that's always been a problem not with, with some with some ultra scenery like their the stock one that comes out when you buy ultra scenery if you look at the uh texture on it's on that it's like 1024 for the whole for the whole landscape and when you take all the plants and stuff off and you look at it, it's ugly as heck. You can just replace that with a, uh, replace the different textures on it. And we, we have to do a test on that to see how high we can push up the landscape texture. Because I just put a 4K texture on this road here. And uh, so that is pretty cool. Control 9. This is camera two. Uh, control nine. All right, I was going to show you something here. This is just to give you a kind of a demonstration here. All right, now we're out of there. Let's go back to this folder and back to the desktop. And uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. it's this right here. And Okay, this is how many pictures? Well, it says 200 items. So 200 pictures. A few of them are 12K. How, how big is this? Properties. That's two gigs. That can't be right. Well, there's only about 10 of them that are... All right, how big are is one of these 12... 12 this one of this is a 12k how big is this oh they're jpegs okay and i've uh okay i probably so which is 12 times smaller than a png file so that's 25 megabytes <laughs> that one that one image is the size of uh five mp3s <laughs> more you know six mp3s if they're Three minute songs, because <laughs> it's like uh, 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 a ten megabytes. What would it be? Uh, three megabytes per three point three or four megabytes per song. So uh, uh, it's uh, one megabyte per minute for uh, an MP three. So. And that's roughly at three, I think at three, 20 kilobits per second. So yeah, a 12 to one compression ratio between like a wave file or a flack file and an MP3 at 320 kilobits per second. Yeah, all this kind of crazy. That's, you, you can see why I compute data in my head like this. Like it's just, it's like nothing for me to compute these sizes of things. 
because of the data of it that it takes to do it. Now this is interesting here. Okay, uh, we'll open this here. Now, just think of what you could do stretching this over a piece of landscape that, and so you wonder, it's like, how do you, how do you fit something like this onto a piece of land, like a piece of how, how do you get a plane to, to, and there's, I bet there's, I know that maybe uh, the Photoshop was, was getting into 3D and then all of a sudden they just got out of it. How do you, how would you get something to generate this into layers of land so that like this would be higher and then you could have like a little you know the land would come down and you'd lay this over top of it and and then it would it would be like a piece of land so that's something that we're going to at some point I know we will be looking into this as to how how to turn okay how a landscape photo into a height map. Oh, GIMP. <laughs> All right. Here's some steps for creating a height map from a landscape photo in GIMP. Open GIMP and, and the diffuse texture you want to use to generate the height map. Select image mode grayscale, how to color the image. Select color, level to open the histogram dialog box. Go to filters. Because Photoshop got rid of all of their... Uh, an OK to convert the grayscale image or layer into a normal map. Yes, a grayscale image is... A grayscale image is a height map. Okay, and all right, now I'm, I'm remembering things. I just like all of a sudden I completely forgot everything. But uh, what you do is you would bring the image into Photoshop, into DAS, and you could render it with a uh, a canvas. And then if you, and you would use the canvas here, render canvases, add a can canvases, add a canvas. And which one would it be? It would be I think it's environment lighting, depth, no, it would be depth. And what that would do would be create a, and what you do is, the, the high, okay, so you'd create this as depth. And then, and you also have to keep the, I think you have to keep the beauty one too, so, okay, with Z. Oh, that didn't do it. So edit, redo. You would keep this one at beauty. And then you add another one and you change that to depth, I believe. And then, and okay, so 
I'm not sure exactly, but what this would do would be create And then you'd put your image here and render the image and the it would create a depth map a black and white depth map for the image. And that depth map would then you could load that depth map depth map out on onto a, a plane and it with a plane would take on the characteristics and I'm not. I, I'm. My, I'm drawing a blank how to do that because. Uh, oh, you would load the the depth map into. Ultra scenery. And what you do is you just and then you can at, use all these textures and and load that onto the onto the, the landscape. Because what you would do is you go to, to Ultra Scenery here. Let's select Ultra Scenery. Here, Favorites, Most Used. Let's just open Ultra Scenery. And here where it says Height Map, that's it. Choose the map, Browse. And you can make your own land shape. And then put the features that you want, uh, the, uh, and it, it will lay its own. And this, uh, this height map is a black and white image. So uh, we could just load like one of these black and white images that we have here, and it would just this bump map, and it would create a map with all of the... And the white parts would be dark, that deep, and it would create a big plane with those. The white parts would stick up on the plane, and the dark parts would stick down. And if you take this bump map into Photoshop or GIMP, and you make the dark parts black and the white parts really, really white, then it will have like a lot more depth to it. The more, the, <laughs> the more black and white it is, the more that it will the more the more contrast um, it, that it has between black and white the the deeper the the deeper and uh, yeah the the more height it will have and uh, this maximum amplitude at altitude you can go from zero to five. And I think that uh, is another kind of way of taking your height map and, and giving it more, boosting the altitude of the map. That's one way to bring this in here. Uh, but it's only, Ultra Scenery only offers you a certain size piece of, uh, and I think there's another way to bring in You can also we have Bryce. You open up Bryce. Bryce still has some pretty uh, now we go here into landscape and then we edit this and see where it says pictures here load you can load an a black and white image in here and th see this this creates this height map <laughs> and if i were to take this and uh, paint some more here watch this image here how it just and if I go and turn, change it to black, then it all of a sudden it's got a crater in it. <coughs> this is a height map. They also call DEMS, Department of Elevation Maps. So, uh, and then what you can do is you can apply this, and then you can file export OBJ object OBJ 
<laughs> and and the detail in this landscape because this is like massive like if i put a sphere in here that's a big sphere but the detail in this land is when you put a piece of land in here is massive when we put a texture on here well that's another piece let's let's use this piece of land instead we go to land here it's been a long time since i've done this uh Terrain one, let's delete that. And terrain two, material. Architectural, terrains, vegetation, green age. Yes. And we render this, see what this looks like. You see, this is highly, highly detailed land. On this, you also have the Geo, Geo uh, Ember Gen, you know, the Geo Gen is another thing. Okay, uh, we go plus. Is that, yeah, that opens this up a little bit. And so this uh, is some pretty, this you can export as an OBJ file export uh, object I think you can also export it as an MDL maybe FBX there's your texture but what you're really just looking at for mostly here because you don't need the texture what you just need is the uh, the shape and then you load the surface, you load the texture and all that stuff, and you line it up with your with your tools in with your surfaces and your and all and in DAS. So all you'd need is the OBJ file. And let's make do a little test here with this. Uh, let's say uh, this would be 3ds. Where's the OBJ? mesh export terrain to desktop save it grid try a oh, width and height oh my gosh we can change this wow that's 4k is the highest we can go what's this grid triangulation wow oh that's how many polygons whoa you can set how See, this is massive, uh, massive, because you can, like, give this really detailed, even though it's 4K, it has, like, polygons, like, crazy in it. And you save it. You don't, we don't need any of these colors. All right. Uh, or the bump. You can, oh, we do, with, we don't need the bump if we're going to put, if we're going to use an image that we've created. See, so you can load the image in here into into Bryce and it's it's a landscape generator it's it it allows you to all right so we're going to save this on the desktop and now let's go uh let's save this cave save this we'll go file new so what we have to do is learn how to turn the image in into a height map uh so okay um okay new let's let's see what this new scene okay file import das hasn't crashed on me once tonight so i it's being nice to me now I've been here for three and a half hours. All right, let's see. We're getting close to, okay, import. Let's see what this looks like on the desktop here. Why it took me way into Blender for import, desktop. 
terrain2.obj, okay, I guess, yes, 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 custom uh, from Mitzi Bryce. Let's try that. Oh my gosh. Look at this. And you can, <coughs> you can also put, now we could have put a few more, uh, we could have put a few more polygons in there, but why do that when you've got uh, sub D? Oh, must select an object first. How about we try the terrain? Object. And that just smoothened that off a lot. Made it look really cool. Let's look at it in, it's going to be just gray. An iray, but when you think of this, that this terrain here is just a black and white image, that we went into Bryce here. We select the image. Okay, let's go back to wireframe. Edit the image. We just come in here and change, change the image. Say we want a big plateau here, and you watch this little image here, and you can say how hard you want the brush. And that's the fall off maybe, okay, so. Yeah, it goes from black to pure white. We can cancel this X. Come back in here, edit it. But the thing is, is you can load your own image in. And that is, this is where it's very powerful. Because once you load your image in, it turns that image into a plane. And you can set how, set how much geometry is within it. So uh, this Bryce is, you know, that's, that's this is why, um, in many ways, I kind of, I wish Bryce was just part of Daz, you know, that it was, and that's how you make your ground is, is just in here and you can set uh, how large, oh, you have all kinds of funky brushes, I think, uh, yeah, that you can add kind of weird things to the ground and uh, I didn't know about these brushes but that's cool and and I imagine you can load make your own brushes it says add add brushes so uh, let's go out of here again X, so we reset it, go back in, edit. Z, undo. Let's find a, a brush that has something in the middle. This one. Z. Okay, this, you can undo and redo, I guess. That's it. So you have to go out and go back in. Edit. And we can, where's the scale of the brush? Where's the scale? Okay, that. It's not saying what they are, but brush Behavior, elevation, erosion, unpaint, paint effect, minimum, maximum, erosion. You can just erode it with it. You're not actually changing the color. You're just kind of eroding the landscape with it. And that, I think, is how, how intensely it erodes. So you're just kind of softening it. What's this one? Oh, that's the size, and this one would be how uh, hard, harsh it is. How, 
uh, how sharp uh, the edges are. And that's, we're using black. What's this? Oh, and this is how you can change it to math. It's like planetary resolution. Wow. See, so this is like way, and probably my computer can easily handle this resolution. So when we go into here, and possibly there's a good possibility it may not want to go back into Bryce. It's like they probably made these resolutions, but there was no computer at the time powerful enough to actually load them. But I just put this massive resolution on this. And then we select this, and let's put a, a texture on it. And the textures here are, ge are algorithmically generated. So they, whatever size... Um, thing you put on the I like the wildflower one what is this what is this uh, spring wildflowers that's my favorite one and, and then let's just render it real quick and see what it looks like now uh, I eroded it quite a bit so we did some changes to it Now, this is supposedly planetary size. So what happens when we try to export this with export object with, with as an FBX export, mesh export? Okay, we're going to create folder, Bryce, land, Bryce, landscape. All right, let's go in here and let's see what pops up when we do this. Yeah, the same thing. We can add some, some, like, to something out of memory. <laughs> okay, I might have crashed. Let's see. No, it, it, I crashed it. Okay, exit. Let's see what happens. It's going to close bright. So I, um, yeah, I, for, and the thing is, is that I have 128 gigs. I believe Bryce uses, it does not use your graphics card. It uses your system memory. So I just ran out of 128 gigs by setting that up all the way, apparently. So, uh, but this, uh, this is, you can just put a, uh, Let's try putting that. Yeah, so I, that was pretty, that's pretty interesting how, how you can do all of that art. Now, if we took, I'm, uh, I'm wondering about, because what this requires, what we're trying to do is we're trying to fit a uh, uh, fit a land a, a picture to a uh, a 3d chunk of land you know and so up here would be the like in this picture would be the apartment buildings up in the back would be these apartment buildings and the thing is, is this image here, uh, this image is, uh, now what would it do with the trees and all of that? It would, I, I, I tend to think they wouldn't be, they would not be, uh, it wouldn't take all this detail and make it into trees. So I am assuming that what it would do is, uh, make uh, this part kind of flat, maybe put a little bit of some depth in here. It might even do this very detailed here, but as it goes back up, this would might probably just all be a flat like image from about there back. 
I don't know. I've not, I've not uh, actually, now that I think of it, um, that's how the, this beauty thing works where uh, it, it would actually, these would actually be, uh, but how the, the, this image lays over it and all would be incredibly interesting to try. It's something that's over my head right now. Uh, and it's something I have to research to figure out. I'm not really holding my breath that it's going that uh, turning uh, an image like this into a mesh is because uh, if that was the case, then we would be buying mesh images from Daz, you know, and that we're not. They 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 do it the old fashioned style. They make the house into separate little objects and the trees are all separate objects. Everything's separate. If you could just turn a photograph into a landscape, and I think you can to some degree, but how much you can, it's like, look at all the detail in here, but that's what bump maps are all about. This is all shadow, it's shadow stuff. Uh, Yes, I guess that's going to do it for me too. Art, you have a good night. Thank you everybody for coming. I hope I hope this was enlightening, enlivening, enlivening and all kinds of other positive speculative things that can add add stuff. Yes, I'm moving along and yes, and Sigmund says hi to Angus. Let's see. Oh, that was nice, Sigmund. So, yes, it's going to be. <laughs> yes, it is time for some quality time myself. I, I you know, I, I always think I'll go watch a movie, but, you know, I'm going to get involved in all this stuff. I'm going to have to open up Gimp after I'm all done and I'm going to have to find out about all this stuff about about depth maps and Department of Elevation maps and everything. And you know you can get elevation maps of anything on Google Images. So if you want like the, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the uh, an elevation map of like any place, you know, if there are, uh, there, you know, a fjord in Norway or something, you, they're, they, there are elevation maps for everything, the entire Earth. Every place on the Earth, there are these maps that uh, you can get from the Department of Elevation. Or uh, uh, so at, and no, what is it again? NOHA or some NOAA, I guess NOAA does the Department of Elevation maps. But you can get them. You, there used to be a program that you could just plug in any city and get the department. And I bet you can do that with Google Earth, that you can just go to any place and say, I'd like to have. And what they give you is a black and white image that you can load in uh, and turn into a landscape. And then you have to put your own textures and stuff on it. So it's nice to have a photograph with it. So, all right. This is going to do it for me. We are heading out and okay, Sigmund's over there dancing and it's the it's the Sigmund polka 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 time. So this is Rex Red. I am saying goodbye for now. Thank you. Please leave likes and comments on the video. If you want to learn more, if you want to enlighten me and share some of your breadth of knowledge, it is welcome, okay? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes, well, we'll turn it up a little bit for you, Art. So here we go. The polka polka time. <laughs> polka polka time. Have a good night, dear friends. I will see you again. This is Rex Red signing off for now. And thank you for hanging with me. The German Fest. Oh, yes. Well, uh, 
Sigmund's friend Marlo has does loves to do clogging and and they do they their leader hosen they dance around and they do all of that fun stuff so so long for now I actually have a hand that's not disappearing you know but if I go over there it's gone I know how far I can go Bush Gardens <laughs> that sounds like fun the German fest in uh in the hinterlands would sound like a lot of fun. I have a German Fest t-shirt with a German Fest. I wonder where I got that from. So, all right. Thank you, people, people. You take care. And I will see you again soon. This is Rex Red saying so long for now. Tons happy rendering. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, I hope you just, Get all kinds of ideas. Get your phone together. I'm going to look and see how much an upgrade <laughs> costs me on my phone. I would love to have 200 megabits, megapixels, uh, another 100 megapixels on my phone. That would be nice. So it's like, wow, that, that means at 200 megapixels, that would be 24 megapixel images. 24, 24 K images. Yeah. Wow. So you're talking about some massive, massive stuff. So really taking these images and turning them into. So you could just come here and and lay this image over a plane and then start pulling pieces of it out and push, pulling stuff up and getting it to just kind of lay across the plane in a very cool kind of way if you put enough if you put enough geometry into the plane so i will be talking with you later you take care many many images that we get in hdri are all just lay the front part is all a big plane so you just put it in as an HDRI and, and and then you move the image up around until until the part that goes up is up and the part that comes out is out. And there you go. So, all right, take care. I will see you again soon, people. Have a great, great evening, Angus and art and software tools. And have I missed anybody? And we had CDJ here. Yes. So, yeah. And we also had Tex. So that's the first time he's been here tonight. Tex. Tex Ghost. So, yes. Yes. You guys are awesome. Take care. Bye-bye for now. I will see you again soon in the next Easy 3D TV tutorial. Bye-bye.